I'm with your host, Danny Polishchuk. Welcome back, everybody, to an all-new episode of your favorite call-in show on the internet, Low Value Mail. This is episode number 120 on this Monday, September 16th, 2024, the year of our Lord. And as I like to say, we still don't know which Lord, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. Joining me today, shortly, we have John Kerwin, author of the Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide. Uh, he's going to be joining us very shortly, uh, and I'm looking forward to talking to him. He's uh, I'm watching some some podcasts, interviews with him today. He's an interesting man. He's going to be here. And as always, uh, we're going to talk for a bit, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. And I'm not late. I see you keep saying I'm late. I'm not late. I was right on time. But you know what? You think what you want to think. That's your own conspiracy. And we're going to learn how I'm going to deal with the people in the chat who are conspiring. Against, you're not conspiring against me. I bet some of you are, actually. Um, but that'll be another episode. Uh, but yes, and for those of you who have never seen the show, because I know, you know what, every week people watch this, have probably never seen the show. You discover this on YouTube or whatever, Twitter, wherever it is. Uh, Low Value Mail is just, we're doing an old school call-in show. It's, uh, you know, in my biased opinion, the greatest call-in show in the galaxy. That's just my opinion. We got, you know, we got awesome guests every week. And most importantly, you... The listener slash viewer, if you watch it live, obviously, if you're not watching this live, you can't call in. You can just listen to people who call in. But if you're watching this live, it's like the only podcast where you can just be on it. How many times have you been watching a show and you go, hey, I wish I could interject here. I have a point. Well, you can. Uh, before we get started, before we bring our guest, John, on, uh, please like and subscribe. Like the, the stream. Subscribe, leave a review if you're a Spotify listener. There's like 20 to 30% of you every week watch this show who are not subscribed to the channel. I believe it's because you're cowards. That's my personal opinion, is that you're cowards. So subscribe to the channel. Do me a solid. Um, if you'd like to support the show, see all these people with the wrenches in the chat. These people, uh, they get their moderator wrenches. The reason they get the wrenches, so we do an after show once a month. Maybe we'll do more of them. Um, you can drop links to videos, and we watch videos and stuff. It's a good time. It's just kind of like a hang. Uh, it's only available to subscribers. You can join for as little as $1 if you join the channel, or you can go to patreon.com slash low value mail, M-A-I-L. Sign up for 5 bucks. You get all the episodes ad-free if you're just a listener of the show. If you're not a viewer, you just listen. with thousands of you who do that. So uh, consider doing that. As always, uh, if you have any super chat questions for the guest, you don't want to call in, because you're probably one of the cowards who doesn't subscribe to the channel. Uh, but if you have a question, you can super chat it. And if, as long as it's, you know, somewhat of a real question, I will ask our guest. Tomorrow night, we have an all-new episode of The Bathhouse, live at 9 p.m. Sorry, there's no episode last weekend. I pulled the plug on it uh, at the last minute due to the fact that the Harris-Trump debate was happening uh, at the exact same time, and it just wasn't a good move. But if you joined the live watch-along, oh, boy, I predicted that he would talk about eating cats. And he did. And God damn it, I almost fell out of my chair laughing when that happened. And then finally, if you would like to see me doing stand-up comedy live, in person, uh, I got some, some new dates. Uh, I'll be Skankfest, obviously, in Vegas at the end of the month. I think it's probably all sold out. Maybe there's some single-day tickets available. Baltimore, August 10th. Tampa, August 20th. Or uh, August. October. October 10th. Baltimore. Tampa, October 20th. What am I thinking of? August. My brain's fried. And then uh, I got just added Albany, New York at Funny Bone, December 4th, and Hartford, Connecticut, December 5th. If you're anywhere in the area, please come out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Once come to Milwaukee, I'm working on it. I'm working on all of these. So um, we're going to get there. But if you live near any of these, uh, please buy tickets in advance. I will love you a long time. Like, really long time. Okay. That is that. That is all I need from you. Without further 
adieu. Shout out to our lovely producer, Mark. Man in the phone lines tonight, as always, the phone lines will be open shortly. one 888 Do not call in right now. Because they're not open right now. But they will be open. Um, and obviously, tell a friend about the show. If you like the show, go, hey, there's this awesome call-in show that I listen to. Tell a friend. We're going to grow through word of mouth, because for the love of me, I can't figure out YouTube for this shit. Uh, all right. There we go. John Kerwin. Uh, just waiting for him to unmute. John, you there? Here we go. Here we go, John Kerwin. How you doing, man? Welcome Great. to the show. Danny, uh, good to be with you, man. Looking uh, forward to it. I'm looking forward to this as well. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, I look forward to these like therapy, you know, because this is a lonely road a lot of times. So these are as much for me as for anybody else. So I'm just glad. Sure. To be and, I, you know, we have we, we bring on some, you know, conspiracy uh, minded guests, certainly. And we have some uh, conspiracy minded viewers. So and you're, you're so. I guess before we get started, just tell people a little bit about yourself, and, th and then we'll get into sure. your work. I mean, do you, do you have non-conspiracy viewers as well? I think like so. Well, you know what? It's become so muddled what that even means, right? Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> I, like it, like if you were considered, like, uh, for example, uh, JFK, you've been like, you know, that's how it, the term originated, conspiracy yeah. theorists. But now that's yeah, probably yeah. not even really a conspiracy theory. You know, there's ones where they've just become... Uh, more mainstream, and you're, you know, th that's not considered a, even really a conspiracy theory anymore. Right. But invoking that JFK assassination thing in any kind of family gathering will immediately invoke. I, I don't know about that same, anymore. I, I, mean, I, I know mean, it's old hat, but still, it's in there. It's like in now there. it's become like, you know, I have my, my in laws, and, you know, they, they would just kind of mainline Fox News all day. Yeah. And, you know, my father in law loves talking about it, you know, and he's a he, he's for sure what you would describe as a normie 100 percent. And he's just like, yeah, you know, it's it's not uh, it's not like the weird. Obviously, there are weird ones and more taboo ones than others, but that's definitely, uh, you know, but anyways, yes, there, it's a it's a spectrum, certainly. Hey, and way, uh, my guests fall further, all along the spectrum. Is there any way for me to see the chat uh, on your channel? Uh, if somewhere? you just go to youtube.com slash low value mail. Okay, cool. I yeah, you can. Because I want to see what folks are saying, too. Yeah, you can see the chat. Um, just chat a bunch of normal. very normal, not unhinged, just just regular folks in the chat. Um, but yeah, ch check that out. So uh, I can send you the link if you want. But it should be on there. You can check it out on Rumble, too. Shout out to everybody watching over on Rumble as well. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, you got it? I got it. There you Excellent. go. Excellent. So you're in the chat. All right. So, but we have a lot of, we have a lot of people who are into conspiracies. And obviously, it seems like conspiracies, uh, your interest in them yeah. has uh, had uh, certainly an impact on your life, it sounds like. Is that safe yes. to say? So yes, I guess indeed. just tell people a little bit about you in the world. All, right, all right. So it has an impact on almost everyone's life. Um, what I found is that the pushback, the response from most people is not, not, not normal. It's not rational. It's very vitriolic. I call it the death to truth or algorithm where you have normally well-adjusted, intelligent, people that are empathic who when you find out you believe nasa faked the moon day and they just go dr jekyll <laughs> and and if it's your loved ones it's not like you can just blow them off and keep rocking you have to deal with the fallout from the chasm that immediately springs up between you and your spouse you and your kids you and your co-workers lifelong friends eventually will tell you Listen, Danny, I'm happy for you, but if you don't stop talking about this thing, I just don't know. I don't I don't know if we can go on. I mean, yeah. you get ultimatums thrown up at you, and you're just like it's not like you can like observe people's boundaries, that kind of thing. This is this is really different because it's so consuming and they have no idea what you're going through and don't want to know. So it's really creates a lot of relational issues for yeah sure. what, what do you mean by going through like you mean just in relation to like looking into these things or are you talking for more personal 
Well, yeah, no, when you find out that most of what you've been told all your life is a lie, that it, it turns your life upside down. Sure. And it's, it's something that most people, well, what I, what I talk about in the book is there's basically two kinds of people, what we call lovingly normies. Those people have a presenting characteristic that they don't know and they don't want to know. However, what happened to me and what happened to most of your listeners is one day we were normie. And something came across our radar. For me, it was, um, I found out the Federal Reserve wasn't federal. Sure. It's just well, a private private bank. Yeah. And so I, I, I was day trading at that time. And so I was in the financial market. So I saw that it wasn't federal. It was actually private banks. And I said, well, if that's true, then they must all know that they're lying. And so then this is what happens. This is when you cross over. I asked this question, well, if that's not true, what else isn't true? Well, that's when you become a truther or you leave the matrix, you start to question officialdom. So the central characteristic of, of the truther is you're questioning everything. And the, uh, the characteristic of the normie is they don't know and they don't want to know. And that's a train wreck. That sure. creates a relational chasm that's uh, pretty much irreconcilable. And so... Because I guess someone would just say, you know, because you're, you're talking almost like sitting sitting at Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, people are just like, how is how is uh, how have things been? And you're like, let me tell you about how things have been. Have you heard of this Federal Reserve thing? And people are like, can you not? Can we just talk about football and stuff? Now, yeah. I guess my question is, is on your end, like, did you really find it so difficult where you can be like, you know what, I'll just keep that for because because, you know, I think a lot of people who are in the chat um probably do have similar things and they go they kind of just have to dial it back a bit in certain situations yeah this is a very common uh viewpoint is that people can overwhelm people you know you're you make people feel like they're drinking out of a fire hose i have a ministry background i'm a i've been in you know um ministry 10 years full-time, part-time, 20 years. So I, I understand diplomacy and tact and timing and not overwhelming people. But the problem with this is that this is a revolutionizing of your entire worldview. You basically find out things that are on such a large scale, you know, flat earth, uh, NASA's line, 9-11 is fake, chemtrails. These are things that really become a priority because what you find out is that the power structure basically wants you dead. And, and, uh, you know, you go from living on a cruise liner to living on a battleship, you're on a war footing, but your normie friends and family are really just more concerned about their happy life. Fun, fun seasons in the sun. They just want to go, you know, the vacation they're, they're, you know, chasing the dollar. Maybe they're, you know, with God or whatever, but, this is an overnight transition to uh, an urgency. Okay, so it's like somebody that's in a burning building. Uh, what the normie accuses us of, even if you're not saying a lot, is being obsessed. Okay, but when you're in a burning building, you're supposed to be obsessed. Sure. You're supposed to run out. So, so that's really where the dig comes. I didn't say anything after the first couple of years. I stopped talking about it, but it didn't matter. I was what I call happy dad. So I would just talk about hair, nails, play dates, landscaping, bowling, you know, whatever, whatever they talked about. I was just not in vomit, but it didn't matter because I was already a pariah. The die had been cast, if you will. Yeah. And that's, and and there, the, yeah, that's go what ahead, go happened. Ahead. A, a lot of people that I've interacted with over the seven years, I personally have interacted with probably 200 people that have been divorced because they found out any number of these things. Now, there's an, a large number of people that aren't divorced, but they're on the verge of it. And then there's a few that are lucky enough to have a spouse that's a gracious normie, or they actually have a truther spouse. Sure. But... Yeah, we had um, this woman on the podcast maybe a year or so ago, Human Vibrations. I don't know if you ever heard of her. And her whole thing was that uh, John, you know, John Benet Ramsey, 
Yeah. So her thing was that John Benet Ramsey was uh, never actually existed, and that the mm-hmm. whole story was a hoax. Uh, it, it's a, it's a pretty lengthy lengthy theory, but anyways, that that uh, destroyed her marriage, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, millions and millions of families broke up over the uh, the medical emergency. That really brought a lot of division. Sure. You know, and so the book is universally, I mean, just everybody that reads it uh, knows, oh, yeah, I can relate to that. Cause, and, there, you know, it's, like I said, there's varying degrees of how you'll respond. It really depends on a lot of things. Like I'm the husband, or you the wife, or you the child. What I found, though, is that a, a family will circle the wagons against any truther. The normies bunch up against the truther. It's hell on earth, man. It's not. And do you find that earth. when you're getting that that kind of pushback, you almost your instinct is to kind of dig your heels in a little more on your positions? Well, the problem is if you really believe that the world is run by Luciferian blood drinking psycho mobsters like I do, mm-hmm. then you have a obligation to warn the people you care about. So, for instance, chemtrails is something I was ridiculed for, and now Tennessee passed a law banning them. So, as a father, I find out they're spraying us like bugs with nanoparticulates and uh, barium salts and aluminum particulates raining down on us every day, and, and my family's just la di da di da having picnics. That becomes a very troubling position to be in because you have an obligation to try to wake them up so humanity can band together and try to undo the uh, extermination program that we're under. See, they're, they're like, like thinking it just about life. Yeah. And we've been indoctrinated into the real world, and they don't just don't want to know. They don't want you to know either. So they attack you. I have a whole section in the book called Why Normies Attack. Sure. I have a question from the chat. I assume we know the answer to this, but uh, this is from Vincent. He says, Earth flat or are you a globalist? Oh, flat. The, flat. the Earth is flat. Cause how how recent round, did you come? How recent did you come to that? Uh, f- that was about f- four years ago now. Four years ago. And what's how long have you been on this kind of this entire uh, journey, I suppose? Uh, about seven years ago is when so, I. So you were a total just normie seven years ago. Totally what? A normie. What was the what was the first kind of your it was your the first Federal step? Reserve the Federal Reserve right right, right. you yeah. said that so you kind of the Federal Reserve and then uh, kind of just went in from there and so I guess my question is so your conspiracy survival theorist survival guide yes um, is kind of tips when you're the conspiracy theorist I guess or quote unquote how to yeah. deal with the pushback. Yeah. Yes, the book the, is not yeah. it's not to try to convince you that the moon landing is fake, for instance. It's for the people that found out the moon landing is fake and your spouse and friends didn't. Sure. And but is it is it about how to like convince them, like kind of no. uh, or it's how to just deal with their eventual uh you know, opposition to these notions like do you like if you were to say like would you ever give someone advice like hey if you're into this stuff like here's the thing you want to lead with to kind of because because you would think there would be one thing where you go hey if you can convince someone of one thing maybe you can start convincing them of others but what's you know almost a trojan horse to kind of get in there right because if you go yeah because if you go kind of too hard Right, then yeah. people are like, we'll kind of recoil a bit. But there might be something where you can maybe find some common ground with the other oh, person. Yeah. yeah, it's actually called the Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide, a guidebook for persecuted truthers. So the first sentence is this. If your journey down the proverbial rabbit hole has cost you friends and family, destroyed your marriage, convinced loved ones that you're crazy, and has made your life a veil of tears, this book is for you. Sure. Now, what ha- the reason I got into this, I made a couple of videos uh, early on. They each got like 150,000 views. That was before they were shadow banning me. But I made those to try to convince my wife that I wasn't crazy because I saw this chasm forming between us. Well, I started getting inundated with posts from people. Oh, yeah, my spouse divorced me. Oh, yeah, my kids haven't talked to me for years. Oh, my church evicted me. <laughs> and so I was like... Wow, you know, so it isn't us. I know that's a very common 
perception. Oh, this guy must be ramming this down their throat. No, no, it's just the way it is. It's the it's the MK Ultra mind control, the trauma based mind control that all of humanity has been subject to. It's ingenious how they've done it, where they inculcated us to react so violently to anybody that's questioning officialdom. So they don't have an intelligent. If you find out these things, let's use that, you know, moon landing is fake as an archetype, okay, for any any topic. If you find out the moon landing is fake and you are shocked because you thought NASA was real and the whole thing was real your whole life, and you you introduce that over coffee in the morning, hey, listen, I can't believe this, but I found out the moon landing is fake. Oh, you don't, you're not one of those conspiracy theories things now, are you? Like they, they go right for the juggler and you're thinking, well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not, I'm not crazy. This is me you're talking to. So that's what I got back when I posted those two videos. It's just, I got flooded with people sharing that they had the same experience I was having. And that was sort of a relief to be honest, because I was, you know, wondering the same thing you are. Am I just a jerk? No, no. And I, you can read the reviews of the book. I didn't think you were like, a jerk. No, I hope not. I'm trying not to be. So <laughs> people read the book and they're just flabbergasted because they say, this is my life, John. What you're talking about, you're putting into words all the things that I've thought and felt. And by the way, the book is available for free on my website. So this is not a book tour thing. Yeah. Is wakeuporelse.com, download both of my books for free. And it's it, you know, if you want a hard copy, you can get it on Amazon, but but otherwise you, you can get it. it. And so have you considered like writing because this is have you considered writing something um almost had a maybe some sort of meet in the middle scenario where you can maybe huh. Not mean yeah, the middle, I guess, I but because it's it seems like you know p losing your whole family is is uh, or like you know common. Kind of, losing it's common. Your whole family is common. It's yes. common and obviously not ideal. And there must be some way to kind of hold these beliefs. Now I understand when you come at it from the standpoint of like, hey, we're in a burning building. Yes. Right. So you're like, this is. Uh, I'm just. I'm just wondering if you ever. If you ever think about that, like if there's maybe some kind of more tactical way that you can, because you know, uh, I, again, this is this is a very common thing, and you know, yeah, everybody's different. I, my next door neighbor, when I was still at my house, uh, was a full blown conspiracy theorist kook, and uh, she never said boo to her family. But see, I'm a, I'm, a, I got a sales background. I was in the ministry. I'm Mach five with my hair on fire, and so what I told my wife is, I said, look. I won't talk to you or the kids, but I'm going to go over here and save the world. I'm going to go make some videos, right? That was unacceptable. Now, I would have, I actually did delete both my channel twice to, to, you know, esteem my wife and my kids higher than any truth journey I'm on, right? I will fall on my sword because I love you more than anything. However, I have a ministry background, and one of the things that basically all I talk about is the fact that the Mandela effect is a real phenomenon and the things that are changing in our environment includes the bible so i was struck with the destiny that i got it I, i'm sorry the bible's changing and uh, that's my jam session so i'm going to go over here and that was like no and i said look i wouldn't put that on you if you want to go over here and do this you know i'm not going to make that a condition to be in our relationship but yeah. that's how normies do it so i didn't leave Okay, I was asked to leave. I was on my knees begging my wife not to do this. And she told me, I don't want to be married to you. We're in two different worlds. So my heart is pure, my hands are clean, and I'm in a big group of people. And you talk, so you talk, yeah, you, you talk about the um, the Mandela effect a lot. I, I, so the, you know, as it pertains to, you know, I guess religious teachings in the Bible. That one seemed kind of new to me. Is that considered when you started talking about that? Was that considered pretty uh, heretical to my wife? You mean just well? I mean, I'm saying you're you're saying you're like I guess, uh, you know, in the church in, in ministry and oh, whatnot. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. how does that work? Doesn't you know? <laughs> it doesn't work. It's a third rail topic. 
because the Bible's looked at as the same way as God, right? God doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And they assume that the Bible is the same because he wrote it. That's one of the tenets of the doctrine of preservation is, well, if God inspired the word, of course he's going to preserve it. No, no, that's a guess. That's a sentimental logic. Um, he sent judgments into the earth seven times where he removed his word. Amos 8.11 is one. He said, I'm going to send a famine, but it's not of the bread. I'm going to send a famine of the word, and men will not find it. So God's done this a bunch of times, and the church for seven years has ignored us. So I just, I just published it today. My new book is now on Amazon. It's also available for free. It's called The Mandela Effect, Supernatural Bible Changes, and the Doctrine of the Preservation of Scripture. It's 400-page systematic theology to let the church know that this is happening and the time for sweeping this under the rug is over. Yes. You're going to have to deal with this. So the and what, is wrong. and this is you're more recent to this idea. This is this was came more recently. So you it's safe to say you since you you uh, found out about the Federal Reserve, your life has been turned absolutely upside down. In every Absolutely corner. upside down. It's a veil of tears, but it you know I think it was D.L. Moody said, many great souls walk alone. You know, sometimes when God calls a man to do something, it's no picnic. Yeah. You know, look through the Bible. Most of the people who got called to do something went through the meat grinder. So bring it on. Right. And so and so, talk about the Mandela effect. And we're going to open the phone lines. Uh, okay, kid. In, in a little bit. So yeah, Ma Mandela people, effect most people know meat. about it just from Sinbad and Shazam. Right. All those. I mean, that's how all of us started to find out about it. It was the stuff in modernity. I mean, mirror, mirror on the wall. Come on. Everybody will tell you mirror, mirror. And it never said that. It was always magic mirror. Really? I'm like, what? I didn't what? know that. And, you know, cliff notes. What has always been Cliff's notes, and it just is like, it's like no a guy way. named Cliff. I mean, it's just not what we remember. And and the Monopoly guy never had a monocle. I mean, come on, I I remember as a that kid, was Mr. Peanut. Yeah, I think, well, that's, I think that was like a cross of Mr. P because they both had top hats. Okay, so let's roll with that. So that's the implanted thought theory. So what you just suggested is we're just confused. There's nothing supernatural happening. And what, what you're suggesting is that we're confusing the platter's peanut guy who has a monocle with the Monopoly guy who doesn't have a monocle. However, that theory doesn't work for Mirror, Mirror on the Wall and the right. thousands of other ones. I can't, I'm not confusing Mirror, Mirror with the platter's peanut guy, right? So you have to have a surrogate for each Mandela effect, and you don't. Sure. So it's not that. Sure. So. There's just, I could sit here for the next two hours and list them. You know, Grand yeah. Central Station is Grand Central Terminal. The Ford logo has a pigtail. The uh, Fruit of the Loom logo, there's no cornucopia. That's a big one. Cornucopia? It's that, 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 that tube thing with the fruit in it. It's not there. It's just the fruit. I thought it was if just. You... Yeah, see, I guess people just experience this because I thought the Fruit of the Loom is just a bunch of fruit. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, well, we find out that was happening. Well, then, but the mirror, mirror on the wall, I definitely—that's what I thought it was for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. It's pretty. It's pretty. And so then, how does this ap apply to the Bible? Well, it turns out that the things that are changing in our reality includes the Bible. So now we have a large number of things in our Bibles which are wildly unfamiliar to everybody, including pastors. And I have now proven mathematically using chat GPT that it's, it's um, mathematically impossible to do what I can do anywhere. Uh, I, can, I can get 10 out of 10 people to get 10 simple Bible quiz questions wrong the same way. Okay, so in other words, if I say, you know, who laid down with the lamb, pastor? And they'll say, well, the lion. And that's wrong. It's actually the wolf. But every pastor, every Christian will tell you the lion laid down with the lamb. So they're misremembering it the same way. How many different options are there? The aardvark laid down. I mean, there's an infinite number. Sure. So I calculated it using chat with just 100 possible answers. 
And chat came back with the probability of 10 people misremembering 10, I'm talking simple Bible quiz questions, wrong the same way is one in 200 zeros, one to two Google. And, and like one in a quintillion is 10 to the 16th power. So this is 10 to the 200th power. So we have undeniable proof that people are not just misremembering. Yeah. Right? So it's a phenomenon. There's something unexplainable. And so when we go... It's almost like a broken telephone thing, but it's like a much, much you larger... like the telephone game, you mean? Kind of, where it seems like maybe one, you know, it's almost like someone said it, they made that mistake, someone heard it, and they keep... Te- it's almost like if you ever... You know, you hear a fact, and then you someone tells you, you yes. know this, and then you just start telling people. You go, what a crazy thing. And then eventually someone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not true at all. And well, you're like, I I, and you're like I've been telling these people for 20 years this. I ran the numbers on that, too, because what the church is telling us, this is like the intelligentsia. This is the Bible school professors. You know, they're saying, well, John, they're just confused by misquotes from pop culture. So I ran the numbers on that, and that was with very, very conservative numbers. It's one in 60,000 chances of, of a pastor being confused about 10 Bible passages with misquotes from pop. This is a professional. Yeah, it's just not possible. So this is not, a, it, there's no rational explanation. I uh, unequivocally proven that. I just released a three hour video just completely laying down the law. This is happening. Your doctrine is wrong. The Bible is changing. You're going and so, what is your what it. is your theory behind why this is happening? And uh, and I guess why is what's the negative element of it? Because obviously, like you know, something like lion yeah. and the lamb versus wolf and the lamb seems fairly uh, benign. benign. Yeah, I'm sure there's others that are not. But I, I guess your what's your theory on how this how and why this is happening? Sure. Uh, great point. So the. Uh, let me just pull this up here. The The theory is that, and this is my theory, I don't know if God showed me this or not, but I think a lot of Christians, are, are, like the Tower of Babel, okay, was an example of where God came in and he just scrambled everything to try to rearrange what was happening. So this is my, my theory, is God's come in because a lot of Christians have fallen into a idolatrous relationship with the Bible, just like the Pharisees did, right? Jesus showed up. He wasn't jiving with the Pharisees very good, but those dudes were really learned, weren't they? They were some, you know, devout dudes, but they had no clue who Jesus was. Here's God standing right in front of them. They couldn't perceive him. So we've kind of uh, exchanged a heart relationship type of a thing, which is what God wants with just an intellectual pursuit. And so God's come down like Tower of Babel. He's just going to scramble it to get our attention. Sure. And basically and so, what he wants to know is, do you know me or do you know the book? That's what he wants to know. Right. But it, and, I, and I'm not Christian. I'm Jewish. But so I don't know. This is a little out of my depth here. But yeah. uh, it is is the Bible not meant to just, is that not the conduit? So I guess I guess what you're what I'm asking is, like, are you trying to get a new version of the Bible written? Or are you just trying to get it told... Uh, based on the original texts, like because I guess uh, you're saying that people are kind of just uh, mis—they're not misinterpreting it; they're actually just, you know, misreading it. I guess. Well, no, it's changed, and, and essentially, to our best understanding, we we have new timelines being edited into our timeline. So Enoch in chapter eighty said, "In the last days, all things on the earth will alter, and they will be out of their time." So, so in Daniel 7.25, there's a prophecy where the, the beast will seek to change times and laws. So he's literally fiddling with space-time, and the past is not the past that we live through. There's a different past there. And now the Bible that we've all remembered, so that's the only way you can explain how everybody's misremembering all of these scriptures the same way. How did it... Because I'm not asking yes or no questions or giving them alternate choice. I'm just saying, hey, fill in the blank. Judge not. Blank, ye be judged. And they all say, lest. Judge not. Lest ye be judged. No, it's never existed. How about this Really? One? I'm not never even existed. Christian, and I thought it was lest. Of course you did. And then uh, uh, the Lord blanks, and the Lord blanks away. Right? 
What, remember that one? He he gives, right? The yeah. Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Sure, well, that's sure. on the lips of a billion people, yeah. but it never existed. It's not in the King James. So where did it come from? I'm trying to tell you. It came from a different timeline that we're in. So Space do you time. think that do you think that we're in some because you're referencing, I guess, what was it, Enoch that so are we in some sort of end of days? Is that what you're contending? Ooh, gotta be. It's gotta be. It's it's really a wiggy, exotic thing. It's not like flat earth or NASA's fake. This one's your reality's morphing. <laughs> and, and that would be bad enough. And I would have walked away from it if it was just things in pop culture. But because I've in, I'm so invested in God and destiny and all that, when I found out that the book, okay, the good book is being fiddled with by the devil, I'm like, oh no, oh no, not on my watch, bro. You know, if I've got, if I, if this is gonna cost me my own human happiness, then this is my hour of visitation and I'm gonna go on the mattresses for this one because, you know, 2 Kings 18, 27, you, let me say it again. 2 Kings 18.27. This is these are in most translations. You got people drinking their own piss and eating their own dung. Luke 19.27, Jihad Jesus. But those mine enemies, which would not, that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. That's in all your translations. It's just not a modernization. We're not confused by Bible translations, because what I just quoted you is in the 1611 Cambridge, all the revisions, the 1769 Oxford edition, the NAS, the NIV, every single Bible. There isn't a Bible where you can go find that doesn't have that in it. So how can it be a modernization? Okay, Isaiah in, a, in chapter 8 it says, Then I made love to the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. These are wildly unfamiliar, but they're also biblical paradoxes. And I, I can go into just about any pastor's office. I could say, hey, pastor, hey, do you remember Isaiah ever knocking up a prophetess? And they'll be like, no. Oh, well, turn over to Isaiah 8. And they'll read that, and this is where it gets really wiggy. I've seen this a few times. They'll read, then I made love to, to the prophetess, and she conceived. And then they'll go like this. I saw this one time, this pastor, where he goes, just like in the uh, Evasion of the Body Snatchers movie, his head tilted to the right, and it kind of shook a little bit. And then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. So they got the download, we call it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched that happen. <laughs> and then did they kick you out? Or they're Pretty like, much. Okay, yeah, they're like, you got to go now. <laughs> yeah, so then they're, then they're like invincible, man. After that, you can't, you can't reach them because... They had that moment where they knew this was not supposed to be in the book, but they didn't want the consequences on the back end. So they, they ran their little algorithm in the back of their head, and they were like, I'm not biting down on this. Now, is this, is this just an instance of, you know, these, these uh, clergymen, I guess, just not as familiar with the text as they should be? Like, is there just a thing where they go, hey, you know what? I skipped a bunch. Like, I kind of skimmed the middle. Hey, maybe if I'm quoting things out of the book of Ezekiel, but we're talking Matthew 7, 1. We're talking really familiar. Like, here's one. I can do this anywhere I go. I'll tell you, any Christian. Hey, hey, Christian. Hey, pastor. You remember when God judged the Egyptians? Who went in to kill the firstborn? Everybody will tell me. It was the death angel. Well, that's Exodus 12, 23 in all translations. no. I'm sorry, it was the Lord now. That's what everybody remembers, because that's what it used to say in your Bible. But now it says the Lord. You got Jesus spitting in people's faces to heal him in Mark 8.23. This one always gets people. Leviticus Jesus was spitting 4, in people's faces? Mark 8.23. And he took a blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. Now understand, I'm not, I'm not a, a, I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I love God, man. I've been in the ministry for decades. I'm just reporting on what's happening. And everywhere I go, I can read these things like this one, Leviticus 4.32. God told the people to sacrifice female sheep. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female and I three people like, when you read that, I was like, there's no way that was ever in my Bible. 
No way. And now, why is that so controversial? Is I guess I'm a, a bit of a layman on this here. Like well, the distinction between the female sheep and the. It's not that. It's just it's your name is Danny. And what if you woke up tomorrow and your name was Tommy? And I mean, your bank statements say Tommy. Your yearbook, you know, says Tommy. All your credit cards, your driver's licenses, it all says Tommy. Yeah. And you go, you know, you're just. It's you almost know. like the in the Sopranos when he's in a coma. Where you ever see that? And Tony's in a coma, and then he's Kevin Finnerty. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He's like, "What's going on?" Because he, he thinks he's Tony Soprano. Um, this this is interesting stuff. All right, the phone lines are open. One triple eight nine four nine two nine six nine. Yes. Uh, if you have any questions uh, for our guest, so uh, we actually had Mark in the chat. He actually uh, producer Mark. He just said. Uh, I have, an, I have old art I made as a teen with the Monopoly man, and he has a mm. monocle for sure. I can only draw what my eye sees. Otherwise, I'm a bad artist. And he says, proof, I can share the photo with you. So, yeah, I, I guess this is a common thing where... I, and I, I wonder how much of this is just kind of um, media and just people kind of, you know, you're, you're inundated with... Uh, kind of constantly just, you know, you see the Monopoly man, you see the peanut guy, Mr. Peanut guy, because they're just on TV and all the time. And I guess it's just a common thing in people's brains, almost like maybe an optical, not an optical illusion, but just, you know, I, a certain thing where people just are, because it's obviously happening. Like this is no question. This is happening to a lot of people. So, uh, well, it sounds like, again, what you're trying to suggest is that there's a rational explanation for it. We're just confused. Yeah. Yeah, but what I'm telling you is I, I can prove it unequivocally without any reservation that it's not that because the math makes it impossible. You can't have 10 out of 10 people misremembering the exact same way. It's math, math, mathematically impossible. Sure, sure. At can't that point, happen. Yeah, 100, can't 100, happen. 100, 100 100% of people, I guess uh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. All right, we got a call on the line here. Uh, Excellent. Let's take one here uh, and see what they have to say. Certainly, this will be one of the more hinged people. Hello. Go ahead. Sorry. You're on Low Valley Mail. Who am I speaking with? Hello. This is Patrick. Patrick. Oh, hold on. Sorry. We got to switch something up here. And we're back. All right. Patrick, how's it going, man? Good. Uh, I have uh, one statement and a question. Go ahead. Um, so Isaiah um, 8.3 does not say, and I looked in multiple translations, uh, does not say that Isaiah had sex or made love to the prophetess. It says, and I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Um, I looked in the King James as well, as you referenced. Um, my question is, if Danny would allow it, uh, I'd like yeah. to. Uh, hey man, quick, this, is the, this is an open show. The, uh, yeah, the ten ten questions. Yeah. By the way, I just looked up Isaiah eight twelve. I don't know if this is the same one, but the no, first thing Isaiah that comes 8, 3. up. Oh, eight three because eight twelve, and the first thing that comes up is it says uh, new international version. Or oh, I think someone in the chat. Um, I think someone in the chat said Isaiah 8.12. This was uh, Benny the Jet. But it says, Isaiah 8.12, do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. I'm not sure who, what the caller is quoting, but I'm looking at Bible Hub, Isaiah 8.3 in the NIV. Then I made love to the prophetess. Uh, the English standard, I went into the prophetess. I went to the prophetess. So... I'm looking and, at it right now. I, I, yeah, I have this as well. And I don't know. There's like, why are there like 40 versions of this? There's 40 so many versions. Ver of there's a lot of There's so many versions. This says the new international version, which is what comes up first, says, yeah. then I made love to the prophetess okay. and she conceived and gave yeah, birth to a son. It doesn't say that in the ESV. Yeah, it the, took, what, it took, went, they took the word in out. It just says I went to. But who's then writing all these? So, you don't go what to somebody heck? and then they conceived if you just go to somebody because yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, well, even what the caller is saying though, and is like you know, it's implied that they uh, did that. Is it yeah. not? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll grant that. Can can uh, 
if you're ready, can you give me the 10 questions? I'll answer as fast as I can. Yeah, go ahead. All right, what that? Bible can version? We... Sure, yeah, we'll do ahead. it. What Bible version do you use typically? Uh, ESV. Okay. All right, so... Uh... All right, so remember Genesis 8 where Noah, Noah released the dove out to the land and then it came back with something in its mouth. Do you remember what it was? Um, if you don't remember, you could just say pass. It's yeah, fine. I mean, off the t- I'll, I, like I said, I'll do it off the top of my head, an olive branch. Right, that's what... You know, 95% of people say is an olive branch, but it's actually now an olive leaf. All right, so that's uh, zero so far. All right, <laughs> Exodus 12, we did already. Uh, let's see. All right, so Genesis 32, um, Jacob wrestled all night with uh, someone, and he got hit in the hip, right? It was out of place. So who did he wrestle with? Uh angel of the lord right that's what 95 percent of people do including pastors but actually what it says now and jacob was left alone and he wrestled a man so that's zero for two and matthew 18 20 for where hey, two or sorry, blank I, I need to get i need to go actually i'm sorry okay what happened? <laughs> i don't know he's gotta go okay <laughs> He so stopped. that was zero for two. Yeah, and I got a video of, of you know people on the street where I do zero for ten. They all and they all get them wrong the same way, just like he did. So yeah, I'm not making this up. Those right. came out of his own memory too. That wasn't sure. like alternate choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody knows the olive branch. Nobody, there's no reference. Like nobody. I mean, it's a common uh, phrase. You know, yeah. the olive branch is if you want to. Nobody yep. says olive leaf. Um, so anyways, all right, let's take another call here. Yeah. Uh, we got actually conspiracy extremist extremist on the line. So this should be good. Conspiracy extremist. What? You were on the show. We learned What's all about up, the Bible. man? How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm excellent, dude. I'm, I'm pumped for this. This guy's awesome. Uh, I have a question, sir. Is one of your 10 questions, um, uh, Matthew 1820 by any chance? Yes. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I went to, I'm, I'm 38 and I went to a Christian high school um, and we had to memorize all kinds of verses. And I memorized that verses when there are two or more gathered in my name, I will be there. But apparently it's not that anymore. Right. It's not. It's two or three. <laughs> yeah, because someone, I, I mentioned that to someone uh, a couple, while back and they go, oh, no, it's, it's actually three. And I'm like, no, no, it's, it's the whole thing is as long as there's two people there. We don't need to be in a church or anything. It's God's going to be there, and That's now right. He doesn't say that. And see, certainty oh. is—it's certainty is a human emotion. It's an emotional state that drives a lot of behavior. It, without certainty, you couldn't do a lot of things. And so, this is a phenomenon. It's subjective. Okay, so but there's a lot of memories that were like what, but then what happens is when you finally land on one, we call it an anchor memory where you go like this, you draw, you draw a line. You're like, no way. The monopoly guy had a monocle. I know he did. Right. So it sounds like Matthew 18 is one of those for you. Is that right? But, yeah. But people are being taught oh, yeah. this though. Right. Like you were conspiracy extremists. You were taught this at some yeah, point. Yeah. I, I had to so, memorize these verses and yeah. So why are like I'm and again my presumption is that you know if you learn it in say Sunday school whoever's teaching you this like are they just kind of teaching it off the top of their head like they're not reading this or are like what like no. I'm trying to actually understand what's going on here No I, I literally we had t- tests on these we had to memorize verses and we were tested on them in school in high school Yeah So what I think, and it's not just the wording or like, uh, at least for me, this is my interpretation of this specific verse, is it's not the fact that a word might be a little different, maybe translations or whatnot. It's the whole meaning behind this verse that for what I get out of it is is change. So the meaning behind it for me is like, hey, you know, we don't need to go to and see a pastor necessarily as long as there's two people together talking about God, he's going to be in your presence where this changes that. So the requirement to bring God into your presence is now three. Or yeah. two or three or whatever it is, it's just it's it's changing the whole meaning behind it. Is it just inflation? You think? 
<laughs> is that See, a Danny, Danny keeps trying to interject the possibility that we're, there's some rational explanation. But no. I'm sure. What nope. we're trying to say, Danny, is like when he was in, in school or learning that, they were teaching him from the Bible. Yeah. And, and that's right. where it came from into his head. But we're saying that that Bible doesn't exist anymore in this timeline or something. So just, yeah. And and are the, are these things uh, standard across all the virgin? Like, what's the main ones I'm sharing are universal changes. So they're in every yeah. Bible. Yeah. yeah. So there's no version where they don't exist. They don't say this, but they're yeah. not. But they're whatever reason. There's just teaching these variations of them that are just not to the letter. No. Yeah, and I, I had to memorize verses not only in both NIV and King James. So I do, re like, they still say the same thing. So it's not like one has three and one just has two. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So, uh, so I, yeah, my, that was my first question because I was very anxious as soon as I heard you talking about that because that was my own experience recently. Um, and then, uh, so you mentioned, uh, did you mention the Book of Enoch? I did. Chapter 80, Enoch nails this, this phenomenon. He says, in the last days, the, the, all things on the earth will alter, and they will be out of their time. That perfectly describes this. Okay. So I was wondering if you may have noticed, are there any verses that you've noticed change that came from Dead Sea Scrolls or books outside of the 66 um, that's accepted in the church? Yeah, everything's changing. I had a guy post okay. from Iran the other day in my, on my channel and he said um the quran is changing also yeah wow okay and, and all the commentaries are changing so that's something that people point to to try to suggest that we're just misremembering they say look here's matthew henry in the commentary from the 1600s and he was talking about the wolf laying down with the lamb so it's always <laughs> been that way and i'm saying yeah it's always been that way now in this timeline so in other words if you use Lion and the Lamb, well, let's use Monopoly Guy as an example. Okay, so it wasn't, the Monopoly Guy didn't have a monocle like 10 years ago, and then 10 years ago it changed, and now he doesn't have one. In this phenomenon, he's never had a monocle, all the way back to right. the, full, the first version. And you think, well, how can that be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's happening. <laughs> it's yeah. And my, uh, I know 100% my like underwear had a my underwear had a cornucopia on it on the loom, yep. 100%. Um, now I have I have my a theory about this about some people who don't really remember like they like Danny said about the uh, what was it the one that you didn't think the corn the fruit of loom right Danny fruit of loom I mean yeah I always uh, uh, I just thought it was the fruits thought it was just fruit so my theory and and you can tell me. If you agree or or not is so i had uh the c3po thing with the silver leg that like i he, i'm like he never had a silver leg and one of my good friends who's a star wars nerd and still to this day he's like 42 and he still builds star wars legos <laughs> he's cool though but he's kind of a nerd um i i asked him like hey dude i found out you know C C3, c3po had a silver leg he's like oh yeah of course and my theory is the people who d either don't remember the it as uh, specifically as may have some of us are affected by this is either they are really into whatever subject it is and they've slowly seen the change so it wasn't like this abrupt uh, awakening to something that may have been changed or it's just something that they've never paid attention to so um i mean i, I didn't know that i'm looking at it right now underwear. i didn't yeah i didn't know he had a silver leg but i will say that uh like the resolution i guess you know, like even some of the photos, you're like, you can kind of bear like him in the desert. You're like, even with the silver leg, you can kind of like barely see it. But then what, right, there's maybe a with that one, but like the Pikachu, man, that one there he, he, on his tail. Like, dude, I was a Pokemon nerd that came out when I was 10. And I loved Pokemon all the way through like high school. Like I knew Pikachu. I drew pictures of Pikachu. I look back at pictures I drew as a kid and he had the black thing on his tail. And apparently now he doesn't. So there are weird things happening. Yeah. yeah, and there's millions of people like the caller, Danny. Millions now. There's so many channels. There's a hundred groups on Facebook. I don't know how many channels on TikTok, YouTube. I got seven thousand subscribers. I got about five hundred people listening to me right now, just talking about the Bible changes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's so, big, man. This is really undeniable. Yeah, I think. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that'll be my last question, but I would like to uh, 
Well, I think you would re- it would be awesome because Danny does all kinds of conspiracies, but there is a, uh, a podcast called Nestle Death Squad, and they I don't know if you you've heard of them or not, but they go. Uh, they just had Ed Mar- Mar- Marbury, I think it is on. He's doing deep dives on revelations and whatnot. But I think you guys, you should connect with them because uh, they'd really be fascinated by this. Uh, but you should go on my show first, uh, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. You should come on my show, then go on their show. Reach out, man. I, my, my channel's Wake Up or Else on YouTube. My website's wakeuporelse.com. You can get my email. Just reach out to me. Right on, man. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, yeah. thanks, Danny. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, later. Right. Cool caller, uh, man. Yeah. Well, I like him because he agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I guess say that really. Yeah, quick, go ahead. There was one post. Somebody posted the uh, uh, the comment. The memory is unreliable. What I'd like to point out is that that isn't really true. And the way that you can know is this one question: If you went to visit your aging parent and for the first time they didn't recognize you, what conclusion would you draw? Alzheimer's. Right. Everybody says that now. Why? Why didn't you suggest that they were just misremembering? Well, if they didn't recognize their child? Correct. Why uh, wouldn't you say, oh, they're just misremembering? That could happen to anybody. Well, I guess that's like, you know, you have a relationship with your parents that's different from, you know, your relationship with the Monopoly guy. All right. So what, let me just put into words what you just agreed to. Your belief and everybody's belief is that the human memory is so reliable when it comes to vivid memories, like recognizing your child, that if someone can't recognize their own child, the human memory is so reliable in those scenarios, the only explanation is mental illness. So Mm -hmm. what that proves is that people really do believe the human memory is reliable. It isn't unreliable. It's extremely reliable. And so- I just wanted to mention that because that is a common out that people try to use to to explain. Well, they do they do say that in terms of um, like criminal trials and whatnot, where they'll re-adjudicate some you know old thing, and then which is weird because I think that that is the common uh, takeaway is that in you know criminal proceedings that's unreliable, but then they will just happily like you know they had with Trump and E. Jean Carroll. Well, they'll say, well, you know, we're or. Uh, the what was the guy with the uh the supreme court justice where they're like you remember where he's like he liked beer or whatever and then but they're happy to kind of throw that out the window then so uh but yeah uh, i understand what you're saying all right let's take another call here uh, yes. i don't know if you guys are having a buffering issue on your on it's i'm getting a notice from youtube but like I, I don't know what's going on uh i don't know who we got here looks like there's a lot of folks in the chat that are um Telling about the things that they remember, so I think people are jiving on. I think I mean this is certainly uh, a common phenomenon. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, <laughs> that that <laughs> can't be debated. Hello, you're on low value mail. Who am I speaking with? Danny, this is a Hubbard hand. Hubbard hand, if I heard you correctly. What's oh, yeah. up, man? With the, with the ass, both hands, Danny. Oh, Hubbard hands. What's up? Oh man, this is, I turned in the right week this time. I called in last week. I was a, uh, I was a, who are these people guy? But this oh, guy, okay. I yep. got some questions, Danny. Go I ahead. Some, I got some Go ahead. stuff. Go ahead. Well, let's start with nine uh, eleven here, and and the Mandela effect. This is a uh, double whammy right here. So, they say there's like this uh, disaster that happened in New York. I don't know. I'm not from New York. Somebody Google this in the chat. Uh. It was a disaster, right? Like in the twenties or something. We never heard about it because, like, in nine eleven, they were like, "Oh, like, oh, this is the worst disaster that ever happened." Now all of a sudden, this new one popped up, but it's not new. It's from like the twenties. What do you think of that, Danny? That there was a disaster in New York City in the twenties, in the nineteen twenties. Yes, in the nineteen twenties. What was I it? Have to do some googling myself here. Oh, I think he's I mean, talking about the Black like a, Tom event. Exactly. Talking about Black yeah, Tom, it. where they it. they blew up the Black uh, Tom, Wall Street bombing of 1920. In front of the, it says no, it September Black 16th. Tom. The Black Tom. Oh. You see, look, you googled it and you couldn't find it. Black Tom, uh, Black. <laughs> well, I just checked the 20s. Black Tom. That was 1916. That's why. Uh, Black Tom explosion was an act of sabotage by agents of the German Empire to destroy U.S. made munitions. Uh, the explosion occurred on July 30th, 1916, in New York Harbor. 
Okay. I was in Jersey City. No, nope, never uh, heard of that it. That was one. We got one there. That was okay. a double whammy right there. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. Pot avocados. The fuck? It was two S's. Or or one A or something. They changed it too. I forget now. I don't know which one's real anymore. I think it's two A's. It's two A's. I don't think I think they changed it. I yep, it was, that's uh, what you I remember. It's now. It's, it's now two S's. And I got a guy in my book who owned a company that does um, uh, inventory control for food manufacturers and distributors. And, oh, look, and, I'm wrong. It is two S's. Okay, and this guy's whole company came to a grinding halt because Haas changed from H-A-A-S to H-A-S-S. It was causing all kinds of inventory issues. All his But it was two A's? Oh, yeah. In the so other that's universe. interesting because then literally when I go to the grocery store, my brain just reads it as two A's. Yep. It's like my brain looks and it's my brain is seeing two A's yes. because obviously that's like what it was. And, you know, you're probably using limited bandwidth when you're grocery shopping. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, it, it, uh, there you go. but it was two A's. Right and here's, here's another thing to add on the on the Mandela effect thing. This is something I heard on the internet, so it has to be true. Somebody had an old bag with the two A's, right? And they threw it in the freezer, and they had it in there for years. And, they froze uh, avocados? It recently, and it has, it has, yeah, I don't know. Damn what a it. psycho. I don't know. <laughs> well, the bag has two fucking A's on it. <laughs> Well, I obviously, I mean, it's not a magic trick. Again, their brain just, you know, uh, they thought it. They thought it said something. Well, I don't. Th I don't think the the bag changed, but they certainly thought it said something when they put it in there. The bag didn't change, Danny. It stayed with the two A's. Yeah, but they thought the, it was all the avocados now have the two S's. Yeah, I'm gonna literally go to the grocery store tomorrow. I have to check this out. <laughs> <laughs> right because now, I just right bought an avocado like three days ago. And I swear to God, it said two well, days. We'll go look at it. Oh, you ate it. All right. I know you ate it. Yeah. Um, all right. Here's the last one. I don't want to hold up too much time. Here. So I think I got the the Shazam and Kazam figured out. Okay. So I'm a little older. I had the, the VHS tape back in my time. So I'm the VHS tape for Shazam, the Shaq movie. Yeah. There was a commercial for a Sinbad movie. Uh, I believe it's his first kid where he protects the uh, yeah, yeah. president's yep. son or something. Uh-huh. So there's a trailer. Remember, the VHS has the trailers in the beginning. There's a trailer for this movie with Sinbad in it for the Shaq movie with Shaq Genie movie. Yeah. I think, th I think that's where the confusion comes in. That's probably the best explanation I've heard because, you know, when you're a kid and I you watch something, it. you kind of... Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that was a genie in the movie. No, he was the commercial before the genie came out. Interesting. There you go. I got all right. one saw, guys. Yeah, that that you seems like first. that that seems like uh the best explanation to date regarding uh the Kazam or Shazam. We got Kazam. it on record now. Now now yeah, yeah. the lunatic. Now I'm the yeah, lunatic yeah. that called in. Right. All right. See you guys. Uh, thanks, man. All right. Well, that's something. This Hoff's avocado thing, though, I don't. I don't know how to feel about this. But they changed mm. it, is what they're saying. Why did they change it? Who's they? Oh, don't get into that on this show. <laughs> Do not ask that question on this show. Uh, well, all right. No, I'm kidding. I don't think they changed it. I think the Mandela effect changed it. I mean, if the Mandela effect has that kind of power, that's fascinating in and of itself. Uh, let's take another caller here. Please subscribe to the channel if you're watching, uh, even if it's after the fact or live. You cowards. Um, make sure to be... Oh, we're going to unmute. Come on, unmute yourself here. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, hello. We just lost our guest. He just had to go away. Who, are, who am I speaking with here? Oh, who's uh, back? Hello. You hey, what's up? You're, you're you hear on. me as Daniel? Yeah, Daniel. What's up, man? You're on. You actually okay. had a super chat yeah. that I wanted to read um, about... Yeah, go for it. So he, he had a question about uh, your thoughts on Philip K. Dick and Man in the High Castle, if you had any. Me? Yeah. I don't. 
I know the I know the show, but I don't really know too much about it. Okay. Okay, I could uh, try and brief it for you. It's basically like, so if if the Nazis and the um, right. Japanese um, won the war and took over, like the Japanese got basically like California up to a degree, yep. and then the Nazis got all the way to like pretty much like Colorado's like this, and that area of the country is like a neutral zone, I guess, in DMZ, a way. DMZ but anyway, yeah and um they uh there's like these um tapes in the show or i think it might be books in the book i haven't read the book but in the show in the show there are videos yeah and they show the like i guess our um universe or our like dimension um of where we won the war and they're kind of like use it to almost try and rally um, like some, I guess, resistance. But also there's like this whole part where there's this like whatever uh, machine where you can go through to alter universes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, and it just like it kind of, I don't know, Philip K. Dick, I don't know if you know much about him, but he like had so many, had a ton of experiences that were just like bizarre as hell and even like one of them was he predicted that or not predicted but i guess um like had a vision or something that his child had this extremely rare like undetectable disease that was inside of him that you like would never know about and his child was about to die they brought him to the doctor and um he saved his life because of that and it's like even now like it's scientifically whatever stable proven whatever you want to say that you know like there's that's fucking that happened and there's no way anyway you could just know that unless there was some sort of thing and he said he got it like from a fucking uh like beam from the sky or something i forget exactly what his experience was i mean i guess that that would have been previously just considered like a religious thing now yeah and also the a crazy thing about it is he was one of the very first people to kind of like get into the dead sea scrolls and like read them and i guess have access to them and he like made so many connections a lot of his books and he was also like they credit him as the first sci-fi writer um because he like no one really kind of did what he did before and also those are a lot of crazy things about him like he would stay up for five days straight on fucking Adderall, just writing nonstop, and then just like slump for two days, wake up, write for five more days, nonstop. And he put out like an insane amount of books. Like he has his like bookography or whatever, bibliography, I forget the exact term. But um, he's to me, and he, he talks a lot about things that kind of like resemble the Mandela effect, which, you know, I'm, I've always been like, okay, kind of a little bit skeptical on, but like the fruit of the womb thing that kind of like fucked with me a little bit because I feel like I remember the cornucopia or whatever. But anyway, um, he draws a lot of really good conclusions and he has a book that's like all his notes and they tried to break it down from like 2000 to 800 pages called the exegesis or exit i don't know how you pronounce it but of like him just like with letters and correspondences and he talks about his dreams and his daily like experiences and it is like super crazy and like i said he has like numeral things where people who are like super skeptical or skeptical um scholars are like well yeah well that's proven like he did that in their medical records or there's this, there's that, whatever. And he's also, I mean, he's the guy who wrote um, basically the movie that turned into Blade Runner mm-hmm. um, and so many other things. He's probably the greatest science fiction writer, or at least the first, you yeah, know. I think a lot of like, times they put all the stuff that's real in the movies as predictive programming. And then that makes it easier for them to control us. And then when they roll things out, we accept it more. But yeah, what you're pointing out is true. Those things are real. What they show us in the movies are real. 
Yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, my friend's dad, who's um, um Reiki, um, and shaman, and as I've I've talked about this before, I think on the show, like gave me some from uh, moldavite and said crystal, and it's like he made an essential oil out of it and put it on my forehead and third eye area, and I like it was like I was tripping, hmm. and I looked up in the sky and I saw like this energetic like see-through translucent. UFO thing, I could not explain it, and he was just kind of looking at me like, yeah, and I was just kind of like, oh, uh, uh, you know, like, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, it's, it feels like you sound like you're crazy, but, and I mean, I, I definitely entertain a lot of these things, because I've had so many experiences over the years, that it's like almost undoubtable to me, but God smacks you in the face a couple times, being like, oh yeah, it's fake, right? Well, how about this? But anyway, um, but anyway, oh yeah, I, um, I definitely, um, I think there's, there's something to it. I don't know what, I don't think I, you know, I don't like to take a stand, a hard stand belief on anything because I feel like that's almost a trap because as soon as you believe one thing, you're cutting yourself off from another possibility. Sure. So, but I love to, you know, look at everything from kind of just try and understand or just take it in all in phenomenologically as Carl Jung might say, (laughs) but yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Danny. Interesting stuff. Uh, I still can't get over this avocado thing. Okay. Let's take a, another call here. (laughs) I'm rattled. I'm rattled on the avocado thing. Hello. You're on low value mail. Who am I speaking with? Hey, this is OT. OT, what's up, man? Hey, I had a couple questions or a couple comments on the Mandela effect. There's a Go common ahead. one, the I love loot. And um, I know like a common kind of explanation away from it is that there's a, a common cartoon that came out that used Lucy, you have some explaining to do. But my dad, who's a little bit older, he used to watch that in old, old TV all the time, like every mm-hmm. night. And I asked him and, you know, there's no way he was watching cartoons and he like, you know, responded back with that line. And if you look up at now, he's never said it. If you look at the discography, any people online, it's never existed in that series. Now, Lucy, you have some explaining um, to do I, never existed. Mm-hmm. I believe yeah, it was in the Simpsons. They say. I believe well, that was, the, I mean, the, it, yeah, I believe that was a line in the Simpsons. Well, see, he, I never watched the Simpsons. I watched I Love Lucy like almost every night. A bunch, I watched a lot of old TV with him. Um, and we both heard it from there. And I think there was like a cartoon, uh, Fairly Odd Parents or something that was another common use of it. That's like another confirmed instance of using it. But my dad didn't watch Simpsons. He definitely didn't watch cartoons. Uh, and Wait, so you saw them recently, say that in, in I Love Lucy or that you didn't? In my memory, that was his catchphrase. Every single oh, day yeah. he came home, he would he would stop at the door and he would go, Lucy, you have some explaining to do. And everyone would laugh and he would look yeah. at the camera. It was like a common thing to where that was the show. Like that was the, the catchphrase. And I, I asked my dad about it and, you know, he would turn and he said, oh, Lucy, you have some explaining to do with that accent. And uh, I told him, you know, no, that, that's not, it doesn't exist anymore. He just looked at me, you know, completely flabbergasted what are you talking about but go look it up online look it up watch the old shows but if you look at it now that doesn't exist and crazy does he say he anything even remotely it. similar to it uh no i mean he, he he responded he repeated back the line as i re, as i remember it sure and he didn't watch any other shows besides that that would have given him a false impression of oh yeah that's that old thing like he's an old head he, he would watch um happy days I watched like old Acme cartoons growing up. We watched a lot of old, old stuff. So it was on every single night. I went to sleep to that stuff. So like, I, that's what I remember vividly. And I kind of had a question of, yeah, do, go you, ahead. do you think there has any like messages with it? Like Lucy and Lucifer, you have some explaining to do. Do you, do you see any other instances or phrases or things that kind of point out maybe there's a deeper meaning? Yeah. Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of people. I don't really have that gift but there are some people that are doing analysis on especially what's coming up in the bible that is it's like 
talking about things that are happening in uh, modernity in in pop culture and the trends that are happening now are being re you know revealed in the Bible through the changes. So yeah, there there's a prophetic significance to them, and it's not random because the the thing that you're citing, you called it a catchphrase. It's like the most remembered thing. Like another one is uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? Neighborhood. Now he says yeah. this neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. That's what he says. I just always said that. Hmm. If you build it, who comes? They. They will come. Right. That's what everybody remembers, but it's now it says he will come. And those are really like central things that you're supposed to remember so they focus in on that one thing and make and they change it however they're changing it um you Wait, know so I, is that from the movie the movie the angel in the outfield angels in yeah the with, field of dreams yeah field of dreams right a field of dreams so it but isn't that multiple uh, angel or isn't that multiple like players coming back why would it be he will come i know isn't that more than one that's a great point that's who who things. says he will come you're saying that's if what they you, say in the movie? Just like the grass and stuff. No, they're just saying all the, the all the Black Sox players, all the guys who got banned or whatever, will, mm. will come play, and then his father will come back. Or Luke, I am your father. You know, he said, "No, I am your father." A lot of people land. Right? On yeah, that yeah. One. That's yeah, yeah. That's a common one. I mean, no way. They're like, no way. I'd stake my life on. I remember this one guy. He's like. I've watched Star Wars 300 times. I've worn out the VHS. <laughs> He's like, there's no way. And then you even have the guy. What's the actor's name? Uh, Mark Hamill? No, the black guy that said it. Oh, James Earl Jones? He James Earl Jones, right. You see him in interviews where he's reciting it from memory, and he says, Luke, I'm your father. The actor himself. And then you, they show this, his uh, script where it was written in by hand. And it was Luke, I'm your father. So that's what we call residual evidence, where the data sphere, the timeline, somehow doesn't get rid of all of the what we all remember. There's like little breadcrumbs still in there that just confirm your memory is like real. You, like you're Crazy. saying, if it was supposedly uh, the Simpsons or the Fairly Odd Parents, why would those characters even be using those phrases if it wasn't a pre-made phrase or pre-known mm -hmm. phrase? Like they yeah, yeah, for sure. Like the Simpsons, culture. obviously, this would have been the 90s, so they would have been saying it because they assumed that this was, they're essentially perpetuating this this phrase that people mm -hmm. already Same believe thing, to be I true. And I think in the cartoon, I don't, I don't know if I saw that, but I think that's the same thing. One of the characters comes in as if he's the character from that show, says the line. Why would, he, why would he just create that line out of, you know, thin right. air if it didn't exist? Right. Yeah, the presumption is that that's something he said, and they're just kind of parodying it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that, one, that one's learning a lot today because that one's news to me. I'll tell you what the most compelling proof is, is there were four things that actually flip-flopped where we watched the whole community, watched them change, and we all made videos and reported on it. And then six months later, they all changed back. The first one was Flintstones. We woke up one morning and it was Flintstones. There was no T. And we were like, no, what? I grew up watching the Flintstones. There's no T. Then that doesn't make sense because everything is rocks. Barney Rubble, Mr. Slate, Bedrock, Flint, okay, is a stone. So the, the T goes away. And I mean, we went to Walmart and we saw the lunch boxes with no T on it. So this is Really? I mean, I'm looking it up. It definitely says it's the Flintstones. Now it does. That's what I'm saying. So we went through this time shift where there was no tea for like six months. And then we woke up one morning and the tea is back. And we're like, no way. So we basically, the entire community of millions of people, literally watched it change basically real time. Then there was three other ones. Houston, we have a problem. Tidy Cats and Chuck E. Cheese changed to Chuck E. Cheeses. And then it changed back again. That one, I actually have an image that I took when we were in that other timeline of Wikipedia, and it doesn't line up with the timeline that we're in now. It's residual evidence. And I also went into the pet store, and I went in, and when it was Tidy Cat, first time it changed, and I saw the product, I'm here to tell you, on the shelf, it had no T. I asked the guy, hey, did they change the name? And he was like, yeah, that does look different. It was Tidy Cats. I didn't know that. 
Well, now it's tidy cats again. And here's the freaky part. In this timeline, it never was tidy cat. It's always been tidy cats now. Yeah, bro. It's a all right. <laughs> all right. All right. I don't even know what tidy cats is. What is tidy cats? It's like li- kitty litter. Kitty litter. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else, caller? No, nope, that's it. Thank you, Danny. Thank, thank you. Show. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's get. Some- By the way, if you're on hold, we will get to you. Just stay on hold. We will get to you. Uh, so just please stick in there. Uh, a lot of people calling in tonight. Hello. Hey, Danny. How's it going? What's up? Who are we speaking with? Uh, this is Jeff. I'm Jeff. from DC. Jeff from DC. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so I, I'm finding this conversation. By the way, I've been following you and, and Ryan's comedy for a long time. I think what you've been doing with this show has been super interesting. Thank you. Um, I'm here tonight, though, and uh, I have a question. Um, so when it comes specifically on the Bible uh, and all these verses being changed and uh, allusions were made, um, you know, that this would be obviously intentional on the part of uh, the devil, you know, satanic forces to confuse man, to, to obfuscate the message, to, you know, to make a mockery of God's words or, or, and so forth. Um, what, what do you have to say for the, the, um, the strain of thought that, you know, you know, the Catholic church has been a guardian of the, of the Bible and that starting with Luther and all the subsequent, um, tragedies of the reformation. And that's when, when the devil really got his foothold into, uh, you know, breaking that continuity into, you know, all these translations and, and versions. And, you know, Danny was asking, you know, how many versions are there of this book, you know, for, the first, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred years uh, of Catholicism, there was there was one version of Christianity. There was one version, um, and and Luther and, and subsequent reformers even had the audacity to change or to edit or to remove books uh, of the Old Testament. Uh, I'm curious what you think on on how that. If you want to take the these changes or these you know, these, these memories being changed uh, from a spiritual perspective, what do you, what are your thoughts on that starting with, you know, the Reformation? I, I heard the words, but I don't really understand the question. I can't really formulate a response yet. So try and restate it so I can understand what it is you're trying to get at. If you take the perspective of the Bible's uh, verses being changed from a spiritual perspective, that this is an attempt of Satan, of Satan to to change uh, the words uh, in the Bible, wouldn't it be reasonable to say that that began with the influence on Martin Luther and the Reformation, which led to the multiple re- uh, rewritings, edits, removal of books, and so forth okay. from the old and All right, so I, let me see if I understand your question. It sounds like what you're asking me is, is, is there a rational explanation for this? Is that correct? No, it, no, if you take the perspective, if you okay, if you're just going to lay out the explanation, at least when it comes to the Bible, not Mandela in, to- in its totality, um, that this is satanic effort to confuse man by changing the Bible to changing the message. Is it not reasonable that the first move, so to speak, I guess, uh, by the devil would have been the Reformation and his influence on Martin Luther, which gave us all of these edits, rewrites, translations, and so forth, and removing the, uh, the Catholic Church's, you know, tradition of holding, you know, the, the meaning and the, and the writings, uh, you know, locked. All right, so is it correct to say that you are a Catholic? Yes, I'm Catholic. Okay, so first of all, I have to say that I don't believe it's actually the devil doing it. It's very clear from okay. Scripture, and I lay this out in the second chapter, I think, uh, that it is God that is doing it, and he's allowing the devil to be his agent to do it, which is very common for him. So this is a judgment from God. It's not the devil overpowering God. You know, The devil doesn't have enough power to scratch the throne or mess with God's decrees. But in Job chapter 1 and 2, God told Satan, all that's in Job's hands is in your power. So the devil doesn't have enough power to do this unless God gives it to him, which he has. 
That's Daniel 7.25. The beast will seek to change times and laws. That's a prophecy of what's happening now. Amos 8.11, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, lying signs and wonders, insomuch that he will have all power. That's how Paul describes the devil as having all power. And then Revelation 13, it says the beast will be will be given permission and power, authority and power to overcome the saints and prevail against them. So as far as when it started, we don't really know. We think it really kicked in around 2017. And I am not Catholic. And so Luther brought a reformation of the Protestant Reformation, which I applaud because the Catholic Church uh, is basically the most unscriptural organization that ever existed. So I'm applauding Luther, so I can't really go with you on that idea either, unfortunately. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm, yeah, we're not going to get into a theological question, but um, I appreciate the response. <laughs> what, yeah. what about the, um, and, and by the way, I mean, that doesn't diminish you know, any respect whatsoever. Um, but the, uh, the firing up of CERN potentially creating these, um, these variants, these, these multiple, um, you know, I, I guess, I mean, what some people have said is, you know, these timelines or universes that are, are kind of colliding and smashing. Um, it goes into all kinds of other things that tie in Mandela effect, uh, you know, missing four and one, uh, you know, time slips, things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, do you have any thoughts on, on, on CERN? Absolutely. I mean, we only know as truthers, like, what we're shown. We don't even know if CERN is there, right? I haven't been there. But I'm going to assume it's there. I think it's there. And the D-Wave computers are real. So CERN is definitely a demonic thing. They got the 666 as their logo. They got Shiva, the goddess of destruction, as their icon out front. And the thing is built on top of an ancient temple to the god Apollos. And so then when you go to Revelation 12, I think it is, it says an angel will be given a key to the bottomless pit and will open up the pit. And what comes out of the pit? Apollyon. So we believe that CERN is yeah. that key that's opening this pit. Now, the D-Wave computers also have a role in this because that thing, the qubit, the way that thing works, is it didn't work in, if human consciousness was too close to it. So, because they would, it would start working and then somebody would walk by and it would turn it off. So they had to drop the qubit into a cell, which they then brought down to z no, near zero Kelvin to uh, like basically mm -hmm. make a human consciousness vacuum. <clears throat> so imagine a black hole of human consciousness is at the center of every D-Wave computer. Now, Cliff High is a guy that's a linguist and a programmer, and he created this spider to go out on the internet and to s listen mm -hmm. to conversations. And it, it started bringing back uh, predictions. That was his goal, because he wanted to trade stocks. So he's trying to get an edge. Well, this thing started predicting the future. His little spider, I remember when I started following him, he, the first thing he said was, a lake is going to empty out in Peru overnight. So I was like, all right, I wrote that down, right? Two months later, I'm here to tell you, as God is my witness, a lake in Peru emptied out overnight. So this dude came on my radar. I'm like, Cliff High. All right, so Cliff pointed his little spider at the D-Wave computers. Google has one. Columbia has one. There's different ones around the country. And what mm -hmm. he came back with was there was a much higher concentration of Mandela effect reports, right? Because it listens to what people are saying in chats and boards and stuff. So in and around geographically where these D waves are, where the black hole of human consciousness is, is a higher concentration of Mandela effects. That is my most objective proof of what's causing it that I've ever had, is the D wave causing it and with CERN. Sure. And, the, and the timing is, when did they fire it up for the first time? You know what? Thank you. June 2017 is when they said they fired it up to 100% for the first time. And you can go to Google Analytics and you can look up Mandela Effect and June 2017, I think it's 2017 or 2018, is exactly 
when the searches for, for Mandela Effect goes through the roof. The same month when they turned it up 100%. That's no coincidence. Bizarre. Yeah. Um, anything else, Caller? Uh, yeah, Danny, come through D.C., man. I'd go to your show. Uh, I'm going to be in Baltimore uh, in October 10th. Uh, I'm working on D.C., but if you're, uh, it's not too far, but I know it's not exactly I'll be right back. super, I'll be right super back. close. Yeah, go ahead. I know it's not super close, but it's not too far. But, uh, yeah, I'm working on it, man. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Later. Okay. Uh, let's take another call here. We're going to wait for... Uh, John to come back. In the meantime, Rube Star, phone lines are closed, everybody. We got a long queue right here, and we're going to get to you all. Don't worry. Rube Star, what's up, man? Danny, I'm sorry. What's the name of your guest? John Kerwin. Uh, he's actually just, he had to step out for a moment. Uh, I don't know where he went, but he'll, he'll be back very shortly. What's up, man? Okay, so I'm going to ask him if he's ever heard of David Wynn Miller, Quantum Grammar, Syntax Structure. What What is that? for? Flamenco's. Uh, well, you might be too young to remember, but Bill Clinton was on trial. I remember that for sex with Monica Lewinsky, and yeah. uh, he said he didn't he didn't have sex with that woman. Yeah, and they go, "What do you what do you think sex is?" And Bill said, "That depends on what your definition of is is." Do you remember that? That I do not remember. He says your definition Sorry, of is. Dude. All right, John, John's back. John, we got a uh, Rube Star on the line. Uh, Rube, yes. ask ask your question. Sorry, man. Go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, no worries. I was, well, right off the rip, actually, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on the presidential election and the assassination attempts on Trump. Oh, my gosh, that's such a cool question. I got a lot of thoughts on that. I think everything's, everything is programmed, staged, and I don't know what we're watching, but it sure is a show. Um, of course, the Trump assassination, the first one, it just seems completely staged by him. For his benefit, because that's what what he got. Now, the the he didn't get a lot of juice out of that though. They kind of killed it like six days later when Biden Biden announced he wasn't running. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard. For I us agree. To totally also. staged. Yeah. Totally staged. The second one is to so here's my take, real quick. The White Hats narrative. I've been watching over on the sideline. We're all skeptical. Truthers are like, I refuse to like have any hope any longer. I am not going to be led around by the nose and believe whatever the politicians are saying. So Trump's a good guy. Trump's a bad guy. Is he a Freemason? Is he a reptilian? You know, is he a shill? We don't know. We don't know until he gets in there and he actually changes the world and we're all eating T-bone steaks for, you know, 50 cents uh, for a long time. So until that happens... What I can tell you is, is this whole white hat scenario, okay, this is all what I call the good news truthers, okay? And I'm not endorsing these people. I'm just telling you this is the white hat narrative. Charlie Ward, Mel Kay, Jocko, Juan Osavin, X-22 Report, um, all those, they're all like, the, you know, General Flynn, they're, they're all patriots, and they invoke God, and... They're all like saying Trump's joined up with the military, right? Well, I, I, I'm skeptical. I'm not naive, okay? But what I could tell you is the narrative that they've been talking about for seven years does seem to be playing out in front of us. I mean, the bad guys are definitely getting routed. Let's be honest. So, but we don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens if he makes it through and he comes president again. Okay. So, yeah. Next question. Are you familiar with uh, David Wynn Miller and quantum grammar syntax structure? Not at all. Never heard of him. Tell us what it is. Oh, wait a minute. I take that back. I'm absolutely familiar with him. Oh. Yes. Yeah, just... It's full call. It's full call and David yeah. hyphen Wynn colon absolutely. Uh, Miller. Yeah, I was. Uh, okay. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a state national. I was training on state national stuff for a long time. So, yeah, I have a whole. I have a whole binder right over there called syntax, uh, parse syntax grammar. What, I studied all this stuff. What, what that is, Danny, in a nutshell, is is all the laws are fraudulent. They're they're all fiction because the grammar is incorrect. And if you learn the correct grammar to write contract law, it, it's a total game changer. In a nutshell, is basically what it is. Yeah, I mean, That's it's true. okay. Next, 
It's weird. He does his name with a colon in it? Because it means, the colon means for the or of the. Gotcha. So He's a sovereign I'm, citizen. I'm not polished enough. Well, I don't think that's the correct term. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, as we know, a whole, it, another, whole, whole other topic. Yeah. Oh, he's a fellow um, Ohio, Ohio resident, huh? Or Ohio. Well, like also, he he's the reason why the Indian the Indians have casinos. He did a lot of stuff, and it's a whole other rabbit hole. What about uh, uh, Anatoly Fomenko and the new chronology? Are you hip to that? That's a new one. I haven't heard of that one. It's Tell basically us. a thousand years have been added to our timeline. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. I, used, I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And and Jesus was really Andronicus Comanos II, ruler of Constantinople in 1153. Um, okay. My, my last uh, question is really actually a comment is uh, as far as flat earth goes, because it, it is so divisive and I've experienced everything that you, you know, the reason why you wrote that book, um, your, your book you're talking about is, but like, say for example, this is how I approach, I don't even approach people on flat earth anymore, but if I were, I would say like, Danny, if yeah. the earth was flat, would you want to know? Sure. Of course. Okay. But, so then the I mean, everybody who knows me that knows I'm a globalist. Right, right, right. But here's the question. Why would you want to know? And what do you accept as proof? What do I accept as proof? Um, it's a good question. I need a lot of explanations of things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I need, I want to know what's Elon Musk when he sends up satellites? What's he doing there? Uh, why did I fly to Australia? Uh, I, I have questions. I have a lot of questions. And then, John, what's your birthday? Why? Uh, he's a bit of a well, I'm into astrology. If that's a bit not of an astrologer, so that's not too personal. Oh, um, it's in April. Okay, well, we we'll just leave it at that. All right, thank you. Enjoying the show. All right, cool. Later, Rob. Come on, Danny. Come on, man. Flat Earth. Give me two seconds for Flat Earth. It's so. Simple. I mean, we had Flat Earth Dave on the show. Oh, okay, and he well, did. You his, already know. He, he, he gave his whole Earth, presentation, Dave. two hours. He yeah, had yeah. the slides and everything. He told me about his app. I can't he get, didn't convince you? Can't get there. Can't no, get I have there. I had too many questions. It's too simple, man. If the Earth is flat, why is it? Why if the if Earth is, is round, round, why is it flat? Why is it flat? Because you could see fifty miles, and that should be sixteen hundred feet of curvature. You could do that anywhere in the world. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen videos that debunk that, though. And no, I mean, but I'm saying you could do it. You go to Myrtle Beach, right? You go up to North Myrtle. You look down. There's a hotel. It's eight hundred feet tall. You Google yeah. it, it's 50 miles. You get your binoculars out, you can see the whole thing. It should be totally obscured behind 1,600 feet of curvature. It's no, it's impossible. So the only explanation is atmospheric lensing, which is a joke because you can't see around corners. you know. And, and anyway, lensing actually is 2 or 3%, and it actually bends down. If you put a pencil in a glass of water, it goes that way. Yeah. So it works in our favor. So there's no... There's no way to explain. How, well, how did I go to Australia then? I don't want to get this into too much of a flatter thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I just have too many questions. I have too many questions. Um, all right. Let's take another call here. I um, mean, I'm sure a lot of people who watch the show agree with you and think I'm some globalist rube. No, so you're not. No pun intended. Uh, all right. Let's take another call here. We will get to everybody. So just stay on. Stay, stay I'm good. patiently. I got my water. I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, One moment, please. Okay. Make sure to promptly unmute yourself. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to move on to somebody else. Okay. All right. We're going to go to the next person here. Whoever unmutes yourself first gets on the show. Uh, <laughs> that's how we do it. Man, people are slow right now. All right. Here we go. Hello. You're on Low Value Mail. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Are you there? Nope. All right. Well, that's odd. I'm muting. Oh. I think he just, did he just unmute himself? Hold on. All right. Well, I think this person, these people just unmuted them or muted themselves. Oddly. All right. Let's try another one. 
I don't know if Zoom's trying to shut us down. I don't know if Zoom likes what we're talking about here. Hello. Could be. Hello. Hey, this is what's Eric up? from Cali. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Hey, man. Uh, well, so you know, just to bring the conversation back to the whole Mandela memory hole thing, um, I'm curious what what specifically marks because your guest John. He's talked a lot about 2017 and who's to say it didn't begin further than that, because in this current day and age, there's a lot more recordings. You can look things up online. Um, and it, it was a lot easier back before we had the internet or even written text to memory hole things. Yeah. So, how I get I guess if you, if you could expound upon like what, what what marks that current date that makes it much more so than previously? Well, that's a great question, and we we've talked about this a lot. There's a lot of people, myself included. I agree with you. I think the changes have been happening way before then. But most of us, when we do polls, I do a lot of polls on my channel wake up or else on YouTube. And I ask people, you know, did you ever have anything like this in your life? You know, if you're 50 or, or older, right? Was there ever a time when everything around you seemed to be morphing? Or is it all just recently? And everybody would say, no, this has never happened to me before. So that's, that's an empirical observation, where, what I call consensus, where I, I might have 100 people on there, and like 90% say, no, nothing like this has ever happened. That, to me, indicates that the phenomenon is recent, at least in its, in its, you know, how much it's happening. It could have been happening prior to that, but we didn't notice. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, because there is the saying that uh, history is written by the victors, Yeah. which pro probably can contributes to that sort of Mandela effect or memory hole effect. Um, and so what, uh, and even relating to like the Bible and, uh, the various different translations that have changed over time, how, how do you, how do you find that point in which it's, you know, this was true then and because you know several thousand years ago how how do you determine that that was true at that point um you got to restate the question i didn't understand i heard the words but i didn't follow your question no okay uh yeah it was a little jumbled um i, I so like relating with the bible where uh where do you draw like because you're uh, a lot of the things you were touching upon today uh, relate to changes within the Bible recently, mm -hmm. correct? Recently, and, in other words, recently to us, we're just noticing them, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I mean, relatively recent, recently, yes. as, as, as far as like past 50 years or yeah. so. Yeah, because yeah, so, I was in the ministry for 40 years, and then not, I mean, I would have known, or I would I would have known if I had an experience prior to this where I believed everything was changing. So that experience is brand new to me and most people that I that hold this as happening. I have a question actually. When you were in the ministry, were you, uh, you know, you have your ten questions. Would you have got them wrong, say twenty years ago? I don't know. I don't think so because they were in my Bible then. <laughs> I don't right, know. right, but just everybody else was. Yeah, it's hard. It's no way to know that. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, go ahead, caller. Uh, just just relating to that though um where do you like because let's say 50 years ago it was the bible was true how do you draw that line because there's so many different translations and also i i guess the question i would ask you is like what as far as the new testament is concerned where do you uh, establish kind of like the original Bible? Like what's, what's, what's kind of like the accept, uh, accepted date of 
the writing just because it changes all or it's very, been changed often i suppose all right so yeah yeah what so, you asked so like ha- i'm sorry go ahead no uh well just in general like because obviously the different pro uh the, the different followers of jesus there was different sort of uh uh time frames as far as the writing of the gospels but in general what would you say is like the earliest writing all right well we have fragments in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The original autographs, like the Book of Mark, let's say, was written maybe 90 years after Christ. Uh, so that would be the original. And then we have copies of that, for instance, maybe two decades or even a century later. So what we have now is either decades or over a century after the original was penned. So we don't have any of the originals of full, like New Testament. Uh, we only have copies. Okay, but what your question right. is, if I was reading between the lines, you're asking me how do I draw that line, meaning yes. yeah. how do I make this objective decision that there's a supernatural event happening versus just a kind of gradual f- muddling of the translations by man? Okay, in other words, manually going in and, putting in different words at the printing press. That's what I hear you asking me. Because you said there's so many translations. So it sounds like what you're asking me is, is it possible that we're just confused and there's no phenomenon? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, you're definitely touching upon that. And uh, I mean, especially even before there were like written texts, like you said, uh, the agreed upon date would be uh, 90 years after uh, the, the death of Christ. And uh, I guess from one thing that's hard for me to grasp is like, okay, that's the oldest text that we have. I know that probably we have only like 1% of texts that survive from that date. So it's hard to actually draw that line of what the earliest text was, but in general, I think it, it is agreed upon that there is some kind of like uh, verbal passing upon of stories. And so when you get to the verbal passing on of stories, it, it becomes kind of a game of um, phone, you know, phone tag and, and you're passing on stories that, may not be exactly what it is and then you have greek to and arabic to english and so there's all these different translations yeah yeah and I'm, so I'm gonna, I, yeah I but i guess what you're saying say, yeah i guess john what you're saying is you know there are these texts now and they're currently being you know somewhat see, i've been doing this i've been doing this this is what I've done full time for seven years. I'm a broken record. My whole channel for seven years, I'm talking about one thing. I mean, I did other <laughs> things, but I've been providing a biblical analysis of the Mandela effect. I've been picking apart the changes. So here's, and it took me just recently to finally come up with absolute proof. Okay. I now have absolute, unequivocal proof that we're not confused, we're not befuddled, we're not misremembering. We're not mis- you know, thinking the planners, peanut guys, are not, that's not happening because the math doesn't lie. And it's impossible. It's 10 to the 200th power that 10 people could get the 10 simple quiz questions wrong the exact same way because there's an infinite number of possibilities for each 10 questions. If I say who laid down with the lamb, the answer could be an infinite number of answers. So for every single person to say lion, And then just like the caller that did two, he got two wrong. Mm -hmm. And he came out of them from memory. I could do that with a million, a billion people. Okay. So what I'm saying is that now it took me seven years, but I have unequivocally proven none of these objections have any rationality. None of them. We're not confused. (laughs) Period. Okay. And the reason that we know that because all of the questions I'm giving are from universal changes. In other words, they're in the 1611, all the revisions, the 1769, so that's all the King James Bibles. They're in the NIV, the NAS, they're in every Bible. So there's no Bible out there that people are thinking exists where it doesn't say that. 
So if what we're remembering isn't in any Bible, then how did it get in our minds? We're not misremembering because the math eliminates that. Well, that the only the only possible uh, thing that's left is our testimony. Yeah, that's it. Too many Bibles. Um. All right. Thanks, caller. Cool caller, yeah. though. Good try. Yeah. Th thanks, man. Uh. All right. A few more calls, then we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you very much, everybody. I got a question from the chat. This is from David. He says, uh. I had a similar question, but have you ever heard of conspiracy you don't believe? Essentially, what are the ones where you go, you know what, not for me? I'm going to read between the lines on this one, too, if I may. Sure. Uh, I was I was in a church once, and the pastor said, John, is there anything you don't believe? Now, I'm not sure if the caller is asking me like that. Is this caller asking with a note? No, this, this, this was just a chat from the chat. Uh, I don't think so. I, I mean, I can't read any sarcasm into it. Okay. I, I guess the question is, is you know, what's the, you know. Okay, I'll answer it like this. I did a talk. It's called Help. I have more than 10 rabbit holes in my portfolio. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so what I found out is the more you see, the more you see. So as you start to admit, okay, that's a huge lie. As soon as you're willing to question official, them, a filter comes off of you, and it becomes right. easier to see the next thing. And so, uh, you know, at this point, I believe almost anything as long as I can document it, prove it. Right. Know? Right. Right. But we don't know. I mean, a lot of these things we don't really know. We can only formulate educated opinions. Um, sure. Exactly. I guess that's the question is because a lot of these things you don't know. So are there ones where you go, you know what, I don't know, and I don't believe that one? Whereas there's some things where you probably do believe that you still... I'll tell you, know, you what the next big one is. I'll tell you what I believe the next yeah. big shoot -a drop is going to be, is this battle that's going on, I believe, actually involves humans and reptilians. I think that reptilian hybrids actually populate a large percentage of the upper echelons of society. It's like a breakaway society. And the battle that's going on is trying to clean them out. If, if, if the white hat scenario is true, that's what's really happening. I'm hmm. just throwing it out. Yeah. There. Okay. Okay. A uh, few more calls, then we're going to wrap this up. Let's let's take this one. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, and we are... Who we got? Hello. Y'all hear me? Yup. Slav, what's up, man? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, I had a a question about something from the bible but uh just for the uh the guests um y'all were talking about earth and you know what we're living upon um uh, i would just like to uh you may not agree with me but i'm just gonna this this is my belief like i'll die on this hill as a geologist i'm gonna tell you right now bro i've seen it with my own eyes earth is a dreidel all right, the Earth is, is <laughs> dreidel Earth. The Earth is a yeah, it's, it's dreidel Earth. So yeah. yeah, I'm about to I'm about to get into some uh, Jew questions. But uh, first off, uh, <laughs> serious question about the Bible. Um, you, you've heard about uh, Pantera uh, being the biological father of Jesus Christ? Yes, I I, I have not no. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I well, I guess I'm lost. Then uh, <laughs> you, you never heard of it, like Pantera. He was like a, he was an actual, not the band, not the metal band, but like he was an actual like Roman officer who was a Gaul, and he's the one who uh, knocked up. What is it? Uh, Mary Magdalene? Not Mary Magdalene. Like uh, Vir the Virgin Mary. You never heard that. Is that what you believe? Uh, well, I mean, Immaculate Conception is, uh, I don't know, one, it's, it seems like something, uh, the most hardcore abortionist wish was real. Like, people who, like, want to have, like, 10-month abortions. Like, yeah, I want to abort my kid as soon as it, like, slides out my pussy. Like, yeah, they, they'll, they'll wish that Immaculate Conception was real. I mean, I, I, yeah, you know. Actually, Anyways, what's your question? We got we, we got to wrap these up. Uh, so I'm sorry, we're just uh, kind of so with, uh, with this man with uh, this Mandela effect and all this. 
isn't this just all like contrived by what is it, Edward Bernays? Like Edward, uh, him, and just basically like the worldwide international Jewish order. How? How would he contrive it? Explain that to me. Well, what is it? So he's uh, what is it? Cousins or no? He's no. I mean, logistically. I mean, how do how does Edward Bernays get everybody in the world to be able to answer ten Bible questions the wrong the same way? How would he do that? Oh, I wasn't even talking about with him in the Bible. I was talking about with him. <laughs> well, you're talking uh, about the Mandela effect in, ge- effect in general. I think is what. Oh, in, are you talking yeah, about the Mandela just, effect in general? Yeah, that and just like uh, how he's basically like the father of mass media propaganda, uh, influencing through because, like, again, he did he 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 is like what the nephew or cousin of Sigmund Freud, who basically was telling people like, yeah, uh, the way you behave is because of like how you were touched sexually as a kid or some shit. All right, but are you suggesting that Edward Bernays is the explanation for the Mandela effect? Is that what you're saying? Uh, The architect? Yeah, so yeah, like a forerunner, like a precursor, you know, kind of like yeah, but I I just wrote a 400 page book and it's basically a giant can of logic. And I, you know, this what you're what you're suggesting to me is like a Hail Mary argument. It's kind of throws up this idea. Well, what you know, maybe you're just confused by the Monopoly guy or whatever. And I'm like, well, how? You got to explain it to me. That's not a reason. So Edward Bernays, okay. Well, how did he bamboozle millions of people? You got to give me a reason. Like, how did he change the name of my avocados, man? Right. How did he change? How did he get Haas into Danny's brain? Because Danny has H A A S in his brain. Yeah. That got in there, right? That's Somehow. my problem. Somehow. Uh, man, you know what? I'm uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, read Jewel and Slav. You got me. All right. Slav, I award you no points. And may no God have points, mercy on you. Well, good try. God you got have mercy on your soul. Anyway. Thanks, man. Um, we got some uh, another one from the chat. By the way, shout out to all the super chats. Some of these weren't questions, which is why I didn't ask them. But Jarhead, Gimp Gladly, uh, Drew Huntley, not questions. We have one question from Brian Woods here. Do you have any suspicions about uh, the immigrant crisis in the 100-mile border zone? And if not, can you look into it? The next Patriot is coming to take our freedoms. Is that for or, me? That was for you, yeah. Uh, or, or for about me, the yeah. border? Yeah. I don't, I don't, the hundred mile. I mean, they're running, zone. they're overrunning all the countries. That's their mo, man. Just to sure. just to flood us with, I don't know, twenty million, thirty million. And yeah. Then they they give them votes. They got cops in in California now that are illegal immigrants with badges and guns and everything. That's crazy. It's uh, a takeover. Uh, yeah. All right. Two more calls, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, yep. let's, let's see if we can get this this one here. Good this, callers, this, man. Yeah. Yeah. I got a. I got some great listeners. Y'all are the best. Uh, hello. Hello. Are you the, hey, what's up? You're on Low Valley Mail. Who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Robert. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Robert? Uh, first off, of course, it's the Jews. <laughs> it's always like the Jews. Mm-hmm. It's the Jews. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the whole... I... I went to church briefly in my life for a few years and I, with, with me, I'm all or nothing. And I got into the Bible studies. I read the Bible twice. I read it front to back. And then I read it chronologically, supposed chronological order, you know, in the time the books were actually written, supposedly. And I'm so tired of all these supposed Christians running around saying Satan did it. Satan's doing it. Satan's doing it. Isn't he like the main foil, though, in the story? Well, just like our guest said, Satan can't do anything God does not let him do. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of interesting you said that, because, you know, obviously I don't know much about it, but they seem like opposites, but then you're saying they're kind of working hand in hand. Satan is... Satan is God's lap dog. Exactly. And exactly. all you have to do it, all you have to do is read the book of Job. Yeah. It's like 
it's like what I'm like. Okay, so I I go I start going to church at a I'm 49 now. I start I think I started going in like sometime in my early 40s. I it was, it was a while back, and it did not take me very long to figure this out. And I'm sitting here in this church of you know 700 people or whatever, which only about 12 guys would show up for the men's Bible study, which explains a lot. And, you know, they, they have this whole thing. They, like they, they're all running around with God on one shoulder and the, and the devil on the other. And, you know, like, I'm like, what, do any of you people read the Bible at all? But anyway, okay. <laughs> have you heard, moving on, have you heard of Douglas the what? Other? And the Die Hold Foundation? No. He wrote uh, The Theory of Multidimensional Reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, the reason I got into him was, um, how about uh, Suspicious Observers? Nope. Ben Davidson? Nope. Well, he's he follows the pole reversal. Mm-hmm. You know? And... Uh, got me down the many, you know, rabbit holes of the 12,000 year micro nova cycle of our sun. Have you heard about that? Uh, is that relation to near Nibiru and the, you know, the, the elliptical orbit Nibiru is on? Cause I just had somebody text me yesterday. They're, in-laws are in Egypt. They snapped a picture of two suns in the sky and texted it to my friend, and she sent it right to me. I've seen two suns in the sky myself, so I know it's real. But she just sent me this clear picture. Two suns in the sky. She said everybody in Egypt is freaking out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't well, know what to tell you, but... I've been, I've, I've been down yeah, these rabbit holes, and uh, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, as far as like the you know, like the ancient technology that we find, uh -huh. like the like the petrified like things that it looks like something that's like technological, but it's like yeah. petrified. It's like yeah. it's like a fossil, and it doesn't make sense. No. And but it makes sense if the Earth is on a twelve thousand year reset cycle. And every 12,000 years, the sun micronova wipes out most of humanity, which goes along with all the different religions that have all the accounts of a cataclysm. Great flood. It goes along with, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes along with the ancient technology that we find and we, and we can't explain. It goes, it, it just, it, it all makes sense. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Did you ever see the, the third Matrix movie where Neo goes up to finally meets the architect and the guy's sitting in the chair and he starts telling him, you're like the eighth version of, of Neo. And we yeah. kept trying to perfect the system and you humans wanted misery, so we had to make it more miserable. But yeah, I sort of, I'm sort of jiving on that. I don't know where all the technology goes, but I, I'm, uh, I'm part of the Christian... Dude, it doesn't take long... Uh, if, especially if there's a cataclysm with massive tidal waves, it goes along with the pole reversal because yep. what will happen is everything stops. The Earth stops for a second, and but the but the rotation of the Earth, it's like yeah, you know, it's like in your car if you slam on your brakes, everything goes flying forward. <laughs> sure. Imagine that happening on an earthly scale. Everything is going to be washed away by the tidal waves and everything will be covered over. It does not take long for everything to disappear. Mm, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and then hundreds, hundreds of years later, the, 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 the humans that have survived will repopulate. And there we go again. Have you uh, seen the recent series on Netflix called Three Body Problem? I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Any good? It's a science fiction. It's science fiction. It's yeah. really good. The only reason I watched it was because some some of my podcasters were talking about it. Yeah. Uh, Tim Tim Cast, you've been on Danny. Yeah, I'll be and, on in uh, uh, a few weeks. Oh, it's right not, on. Good, isn't good. that animated? It's like an animated thing, isn't it? No, no, it's not. It's not animated. I'm no, it's it's, it's it's live action. Yeah, but it's a science fiction movie and. 
they're in contact with these with aliens and they're sent these masks that when they put them on, it's like they're transported to another world. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. can't, they think that it's like v, some kind of VR, but they're like, no, man, this is like beyond anything <laughs> VR. And anyway, th- these, they're sent to the smartest people on earth. And the problem that they have to solve is they go to this planet and this planet has three is it three sons or two sons? Anyway, it's a three body problem so that every, every so many, like, you know, centuries or whatever, their planet is torn apart by the gravitational pull of these three suns. Hmm. So, but these people know it. These people know that they have a limited time. And these, and these scientists have to figure out how to save them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you that. talked about you talked about how these people like to put into their movies and into their things. They would like to tell you what they're doing. Yeah. They like to tell you. And I watched that, and then I watched that show, and I'm like, they're telling us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, well, I mean, I think you, I'm sure uh, John John shares your belief in that. Uh, if uh, I can't remember what Bible quote it was. But uh, all right, I got to let you go, man. We got to wrap this up. But thank all you right, for man. calling thank in. Thank you, guys. Also, Ooh, breaking, call them. also, breaking oh. news they just got Diddy. I don't know what that means, but Diddy's been arrested. I thought he was arrested already. No, they just were. They were kind of. They raided his house a couple months back, but now, yeah. actually, now they just actually arrested him. So did they? Diddy, really? Diddy and R. Kelly are going to be making some real good music in prison together. All right, last call of the night. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, hello, last call of the night. Wow. Who are we speaking with? Wow, last call and first call. Yeah, this is it's Patrick up. again? What's up, Patrick? I'm back. Hey. All right. Okay. <clears throat> well, <coughs> excuse me. Well, uh, uh, yeah, you got me uh, zero for two. Um, I what happened? Why'd you have to I leave? Continued on that. Uh, I'm I'm at a park. And there were some cops walking up. <laughs> I thought, they go, "Hey, you're not doing a wrong. you're not doing a Bible test, are you?" <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess there's some person. Yeah, like I swear. I, I, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I thought they were gonna like. I don't know. So I hung up. But anyway, yeah, arrested, arrested I, while doing I a have... Bible test. That'll be a first. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for two. <laughs> I got zero for two. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, John, you, you okay, got any more? Some... You want to do some more? Yeah, he wants some oh, more. He wants for, oh, he wants some redemption. No. Oh, oh you wait, don't? No, no. I, I have some. I have some questions. I, I'm sure I'll get more wrong. Um, but I do have a question specifically about the Bible questions. Um, just based off of some of the ones you mentioned and the two that you asked me. Uh, for instance, like, what did the dove come back to? the arc with i said olive branch it's olive leaf um i think like olive branch like that's that's a common phrase like that's a term yeah, that's what i said of, like extending peace okay sorry yeah maybe i missed that but well, like i just said that it was, yeah people know the olive branch I've, ne- I've never even heard of olive leaf yeah so like again i'm not talking about the whole idea of mandela effect but at least with a few of the Bible verses you mentioned, I, I can, I can, I could see a, a simple rational explanation of different things that um, could be explained. How is an olive branch a term of peace? I think it's just. I think uh, it's, it's just an accept. I, it's become one. It's just become. You know. I mean, obviously. It's, right. Okay, I, but the but the dove could have come back with a cranberry. It could have come back with a bu- a bug. Yeah. No, I'm right? not. I'm not debating that. I. I just. And yeah. I don't that know that seems to be. Uh, yeah. That right. Seems but to, but see, 
I'm listening to you, okay? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to interject rational explanation for why you gave that answer. And what I'm saying is right. your answer, Branch, is is uh -huh. there's an infinite number of things you could have said, but the only thing you said yeah. was Branch, Olive Branch, All right? Now, yeah. what I'm saying is that I can do that with a billion people, and they'll all tell me Branch. Uh -huh. And what I'm telling you is that that is statistically impossible. There is no possible rational explanation for the fact that you said branch none it's now okay. math yeah it took and, me and seven years to get to this certainty level but i'm yeah. telling you it's dark. no yeah i and I, and I could i mean there's a possibility and i i'd like to look this up maybe that's even how that term or phrase came from i'm looking it up um, right now it says sure, it's but, uh generally associated with the customs of ancient greece and rome so this probably predates but this is the escape the, route that the people Bible. cling that to. You're gay. trying to come yeah, in yeah. with this underlying explanation. So this is the analogy. You go to your parent, and they don't recognize you. And, and they're like, who right. are you? And you say, Mom, it's me. And you say, well, well, I don't know who you are. And then you say, why? And this is what your mom says. Well, the etymology of your name means I don't recognize you. How ridiculous sure. is that? It has nothing to do with what the meaning of the olive branch is. It has to do with... I guess parents. the leaf is attached to the branch, though, because it says here, and this is Wikipedia, but it says the olive branch appears with a, dove, right. with a dove with a dove in early Christian art. And in so, terms of just why everybody's making the mistake, I suppose. No. The, the no, explanation. Okay, but, okay. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> anything else there, man? Patrick, we, we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, but, I, I yeah, go ahead, a go ahead. couple more questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, what uh yeah you met you mentioned just now epistemology epistemology how um how does this affect your epistemology like how can you trust anything to be and i that sounds kind of extreme but like how can you trust anything if you're opening up this idea that so many facts and things are changing in real time you know what I mean? Uh, That's a good question. There's two, there's two parts to that question. The first part of your question, whether you know it or not, is you're trying to suggest this. Because the consequences of this is so terrible, I don't believe it's happening. I know that that sentiment is in the minds of many people. Okay, And what I'm telling you is mm -hmm. this is a judgment of God. It's supposed to be terrible. It's supposed to snap you out and ask you this question. My child... My son, do you know me or do you know the book? Because if you, you can know the book and not know God. The Pharisees prove that. So that's the first answer to your first part of the answer to your question. The second part is the people that are demanding that you can't know God unless the Bible is perfect are emulating people in the Bible that didn't have a Bible. So you got Joshua telling the son to stand still. And it stops. You got axe, you know, Elijah raising axe heads to float on the water, Moses parting the Red Sea. <clears throat> These people are doing pretty good with God, right? And they have no Bible. So I'm not advocating that we don't need the Bible. All I'm doing is reporting on the fact that God is changing the Bible and we're gonna have to formulate some sort of response. That's all I'm doing. Okay. I'm, I'm just uh, I I have okay, two more questions. Yep. Yeah, um, go ahead. So just a, a potential pushback against this. Could this idea of Mandela effect be very similarly a spiritual deception in itself, that this is actually a form of deception um, that oh, we're constant, constantly misremembering things when in actuality we have like these things aren't changing but it appears so like what is your response to yeah. that absolutely that, um, that these ma this this mass delusion is happening but it, it's it's what it is it's a delusion or, or it's what it could be a, as a delusion it's a great question so my answer is you'd have to explain how we're deluded if I'm deluded, how am I deluded? Because I'm not deluded just but, because but, you're suggesting it, right? 
I'm, I know I'm not deluded. So you have to show me how you're rational and I'm not. Okay. So the but only could, way that I know, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, to my, from my perspective, and I mean, I haven't searched this at all, basically. Um, could, isn't there essentially the same amount of proof that you could say, like, this is a mass delusion as someone saying, no, this is the truth. Like if, if one's a lie and one's the truth, it, it's like one or the other. Yeah, if that, I, I can clear I, this up. Obviously know. this is not the first time that it's been suggested that we're under a delusion. So my response uh -huh. to that has been, well, how are we deluded? Okay, so the only, the only logical, rational explanation for how an untold number of people will be deluded, let's use the Monopoly guy as an example. Okay, all of us listening, probably almost everybody remembers, if you think about the Monopoly guy, you can see in your mind that he has a monocle. You have a memory of him having a monocle. Now, if the unconvinced are correct, he never had a monocle. So what you have to then assume if we're deluded is that we are having false memories implanted in our heads. That's the only way that you can actually explain yeah. how we're deluded. You with, with me so far? With, yes, which uh, is the same thing that you're stating, is it not? Well, no, it's not what I'm the, stating. The inverse of, of what you're saying? Well, let me finish. So, so here's the problem. I have a peer-reviewed study published in, you know, different psych magazines. It's a peer-reviewed study on the Mandela effect. And what it proved is that the unconvinced and the Mandelite person share the exact same memories. And we also know that from experience. So, so that means if we're deluded, then so are the unconvinced. Because the only way that you could be deluded is having false memories implanted into your brain by the lizard people or by a mind control weapon or a virus or a nanoparticle or whatever, because if they're right, the Monopoly guy never had a monocle, right? Hmm. If he, okay, if he never had a monocle, then they're right. Then how did the memory get in there? We're under delusion. We're seeing things. Well, that means that that memory was put in there by some demonic thing or a, a chemical, it's not spontaneous. Millions of people aren't going to suddenly be stricken right. with mental illness. So it have to be some. All yeah. right. So, so um, my point is, it's very simple. My point is the unconvinced who are trying to suggest that have all the same memories that we do. So if we're delusional, then so are okay. they. So I don't think they want to go down that road. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That Anything else? A while to figure out too. That's yeah, yeah. Last so, question. Go ahead. Uh, was your name Irwin? Was it Irwin? No, it's always been Kerwin, as far as I can remember. <laughs> 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 All uh, right, that's it. Just one last thing to put him in a spiral for the rest of the night. Hey, uh, good caller, man. Great yeah, questions. Thanks, thanks for man. Calling, man. All good. right, thanks, man. <laughs> All right, that's been the show. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to our guests. Where can people find you? Where's the best yes. place? WakeUpOrElse.com, WakeUpOrElse on YouTube, and my books are free. Go download All right. it. All right. If you want a hard copy, they're on Amazon. Okay, I'll put a link for all this stuff below. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to all the callers. Thank you to our lovely producer, Mark, for Man in the Lines. Uh, that has been the show. Catch tomorrow night, new episode of The Bathhouse Live. I think we're going to be in the studio, not in the green room. But uh, we got a great lineup of guests. Check that out. Uh, you can hang up on Rubestar tomorrow if you want. Um, but you weren't allowed to tonight, and I'm sure some of you were very pissed off by that. Uh, that that's it. That's been the show. Thank you very much, everybody, Thanks, and we will see you all very soon. Good night.
when it turn on my light switch. Yeah. Now we pulling up fresh on some flight shit. Ha. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. They was trying to get me on my hype shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah. Then they tried to down me up some kale type shit. Yeah. They don't want to turn on my light switch. Yeah.